Um, I think it's a great place to start, especially learning how to tie flies because they're easy to tie. You can crank out a lot of them. And for guys like Sam who guide and stuff like that, you burn through these things pretty quickly. And so um, they're easy to tie and they, there's some kind of unique techniques that I like to use to kind of, and I'm gonna elucidate for you today. I'll show, I'll show you, give you my background on it and then we'll share any ideas that you have and what you do. Um, so I thought we'd start off what I call um, the, uh, I call it the flashback string thing. And what it is, it's red thread. It's a little bit of uh, uh, flashaboo as a shellback, which after the first fish typically breaks and becomes a little wing. Um, and then it's brown thread. And so here's a brown thread for you. There's a brown thread for you. Sam, I'll give you this one. Here's a red and a red. Sam, I'm just gonna hold on for a second while I tie with one. We'll use... Uh, you this one? I, I no, no, that's fine. You got a red there, you got... I do, and it's okay. an 8 so... Perfect. There you go. Yep. So, uh, I have some bigger uh, hooks that I think we can... I'll do it, but uh, here is... Those are from my other pattern to tie today. I brought some hooks to Um... We'll do one on a 20. Y'all comfortable with the 20? We'll see. We'll see, okay. Look, there's some simple simple stuff here to, to remember. We'll use these. Why don't you grab one, put it in your hook vise. <coughs> oh, grab. I wear glasses because I'm myoptic at now. At, okay. I got mine. Oh, all right, thank you. Grab, grab one. Yep, so we'll start with red thread. So we'll load up a red thread in our in our in our bobbins and this was and really what the fly is about is coverage of the hook with a color and then um, I'll teach you how to spin the bobbin so you can make a rope out of your thread and then make uh, very loose wraps to create a rib on it. So, Dan Bailey's, that's a little bit awkward. <laughs> I shop in Dan, Dan Bailey's, we don't carry fly tying stuff here. <laughs> okay. But uh, Dan Bailey's is legendary. Legendary fly tying place. Yeah. I had the pleasure of working with a lady named Clara Stiller from town uh -huh. who worked at Dan Bailey's <clears throat> in the tying room. Uh -huh. And she and she would um, told me that she would tie eight dozen flies a day. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. Yeah. That's well, a lot. That's a hundred flies. One of my neighbor's uh, lady, she was an older lady and uh, she worked for Dan Bailey's. Wow. Okay, how are we doing? Wow. You got, you got one loaded up? Yes, sir. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So this is a real simple fly. One other thing we're going to do, I'm going to give you all some of this. We'll take, a, take a strand. So this, we'll do red, but you can tie this, all these patterns, in cream, olive, red, black, um, that, those are really the four, or, no, that's it all. So those are the four colors I mostly tie these midges in. And um, so what, what we'll do is we'll just start by starting with a thread base, start by the eye of the hook and wrap consecutive wraps right next to each other. Well, all, who can see that? All the way down the hook. Oh my word, I guess my eye starts going down in the last few years. And so we're gonna, with this hook, this is a 3X long hook. I want you to go all the way down below the bend a little bit here. Not below the bend, down the bend a little bit, right? Down the bend, okay, got it. Right, so, so it looks like it's got a little tail. It kind of goes like this, right? Yep. Does that make sense? Good. Let's see how far down your bend you went. Good. Oh, I broke off my tag end. I hit the That's all right. So the little trick I use with the tag end, 
because I believe that like fish really key in not only on color, but movement and on small flies, micro movement. Yeah. So one of the tricks I do with this, and I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but I, br I brought some books that are out in my car, is I cut a one mil tag end and I leave it like a little tail. Oh, you see that? That's a good trick. Here. Oh my goodness, yeah. Okay, so then, so then um, the way, in particular the way uni thread is made, let me take a picture of it and I'll pass it around so that you can see it. Okay, is that it's uh, several strands and has a loose strand going up circling it, right? So one of the things I like to do then is just kind of tap it a few times like this, pull it, and you'll see it start to fray. And then all of a sudden it looks like this. You tap it like that. Yeah, so now I'll take another picture and I'll pass it around to you guys. You tap it with your finger when you have it. Hey, Howdy. how's it going? Good. Grab a seat. What's your name? David. David, my name's Jan. Hey, David, I'm Patty. 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 Uh, Rob. Sam. 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 Nice you tap it like, like this? Yeah, just like this. Just like that, and it'll start to fray. Yep. You see that? Yeah. Now, when you look at it, and if you look at a picture, a scientific drawing of a midge, you'll see the caudal tail, they call it. It's the caudal tail. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I do know I, I can see it moving in the water when it's at my feet. You said one millimeter? Or? One mil, yep. Which is pretty small. Yes. Okay. Here, Dave, let me get you set up with some stuff here, okay? Oh, it's all right. You go ahead. You guys go so take ahead. a look at that. Tie this. You can see what it ends up looking like. Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay. what? So, so here you have this, like, it's basically a hook with thread on it, right? Mm -hmm. But at the bottom end of it, you get a little of this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Mine didn't I like that. out. It will. It just, 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 mess, with it. You just mess with it a little bit. It'll, it'll okay. splay out, right? <clears throat> so the next thing I do is I go back up the hook and I'm just making that layer of red. This is a blood midge, right? One wrap right next to the other and it makes a, a solid color, okay? And then one, one run back down, so three times. One, back up to the eye, two, back down to the bend three. Okay, so if you miss, like there's a little hook show in the first round, you catch it the next Correct. Time. Okay. But we wanna create one, the idea about the, the thread wraps being um, right next to each other is we wanna create a bold color without any gaps, but also as you like go to tie other flies, as you progress in fly time to whatever, the the side-by-side -side thread wraps are really important on creating a smooth body especially when you start dubbing stuff like that mm -hmm. and that and it is it, a technique that will carry you through to other patterns the one I, I, tr I tried to tie some atlantic salmon patterns and i found that like those side by side wraps made them look much better especially when you start to stack stuff on there okay so all the way down now here's the trick to this this fly is we come down to the tail again right and i'm going to take my bobbin and i'm going to spin it counterclockwise and it's going to create a rope Okay, just like that. And you'll actually see the bobbin getting shorter and shorter and shorter, like this. Ooh, that was clockwise. Yeah, counterclockwise. And then we're gonna make loose wraps all the way back up and you'll see that it makes a rib. Can you all see that on yours? Mm -hmm. Just like that, all the way up. Here, I'm just gonna tie it off. That's the first portion of this fly. So now you have a red body that's ribbed with a tail on it, all used from the same part of string. Let me get you a hook, okay? Now we finish it? I, well, I'm just gonna half hitch it. Okay. Because what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna take the brown thread and I'm gonna wrap over the top of it for the thorax and the head. Okay. Just like that. Okay, so when you say, when you're taking the rib back up, yep. loose wrap. Loose wrap. Yeah. So it should, if you look at, look at oh, where's my phone? What do I do with it? Oh. It's around. It ended up down there. All right. Good, let's take a look. 
Here you go. Yeah, it looks, it looks great. Can you see the ribs on there? I barely. I'm, <laughs> they're there. I can see them from here. Something happened since I tried last. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. amazing. I, I never really... That little subtle thing that's very subtle. So, like, if you spin it counterclockwise, it'll make a rope out of your thread. Mm -hmm. If you spin it clockwise, it'll flatten it out. Mm. Right? So, if you want to, like, really, like, cover with color of the thread, spin it clockwise. You'll see it, um, instead of, like, having it come down like this, it looks like this. It'll be splayed out mm. and just, like, floss. Mm. Okay? Okay, now you said whip finish here? Whip finish or half hitch, I just half hitched mine because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a piece of, uh, of flashaboo and tie it in. We're gonna, we're gonna create the head and thorax of the midge, which is gonna be made out of the brown thread. I'll just use olive on mine. Here, use some red thread. You want my brown oh, thread? Right. Yep. No, no, you, you go ahead. You, you load it up. If you need another bobbin, let me know. I have an yeah, extra bobbin. bobbin. You know, I've got all of them on. I can use it too. Brown brown makes it look brown, okay. super good. Okay. I, I mean, that's how I tie the pattern. I, like, olive will be okay, but like the dark brown. And I, I tried black at one point. Uh huh. And brown is actually, I'll use black because I got one loaded up here. But, um, uh, but I have to tell you that the brown looks Brown's makes it look really, I, I think it makes it look really great. Okay. Okay. I was thinking the same thing, <laughs> but uh, tomorrow's another day. It's supposed to be, and that's not supposed to be sub zero. So is this an winter fishing minge pattern? Or yeah, but I use I use it during the summer. And I, before you got here, I told everybody that I tie it in. Um, blood is my favorite. The blood midge. I tie it in olive. I tie it in cream, and I and I tie it in black, right? This I call it the string thing, because it's string, okay? And then the tail is just the tag off the back. Of the <coughs> Especially with smaller flies, the amount of material you're putting on the hook, you you are limited by what you got, right? Yeah. And um, and so I I'm trying to like. I have some books out in the car and I didn't get them out, but um, I, I have some pictures of midges and they're long and they're thin, right? And so when I tie my patterns, and I, uh, Dan has come back sometimes with buckets of, for things he's done, I've looked at the midges in there, they're long and they're thin, they typically have a lot of red in them because it's one of the few insects that has blood within it, creates, you know, that blood hemoglobin, right? And that's why, the, and, the, and they're everywhere. And they're in prodigious numbers. I mean, like I literally fish midges on spring creeks almost all the time, at least at least one point. And then I and then I fish them on the big river too. And and I tell you what, on Slough Creek in the park they work very well as well. Hmm. What is it? Size twenty. This is a size twenty. I have some eighteen hooks too, but um, but the twenty to me is a very fishable pattern here. Here we go. So the next thing we do with this pattern is we're just gonna create the thorax and I'm just gonna tie the, the line on. One, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. And I can just come down two to three millimeters from the eye. And to make this fancy like Applebee's on date night, I oh, use. Boy. Let's aim higher. I, uh, <laughs> I use a little flashaboo and I've passed some of this around. Dave, let me get you some here. Did it take that? There you go. So it's 
So would you say the brown two millimeters is about third way down the hook chain? Yeah, so here, let me just take a picture of this and we'll... Dan and I are trying to figure out how to project on that. We just need a longer cord. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So, uh, here. This will give you an idea. Oh, I need to go a little further. Okay. Just a little further. You're building a thorax, and if you look at a midge, it's got a long abdomen. Uh, yeah. It's got a robust thorax and head, right? And that's where the wing buds come out of and stuff I like think that. You broke your phone. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I, 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 immediately, I hit a button. <laughs> Here, swipe <laughs> for face ID. It didn't like my face. <clears throat> Here, I'll pass that down to. So then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna tie it in just like I would tie in a flash bat or like a like a, a wing case on a, on the back of a, a, a pheasant tail. Or, mm -hmm. Is I put it on the side, I let the I let the thread carry it up over the top. Okay. Three, and I come back and I start building up with wraps. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, and you see how now the flash of boo is coming up off the top. Okay, I'm gonna make a few more passes up and down to build bulk. Coming back up this way. And I just make a little bulb at the top end. I pull this over the top and tie it off. And that's the fly. And you can whip finish this, you can you can half hitch it. I know some people who've been taking super glue, they paint a little bit of super glue on their, their line and just make a couple wraps and it bonds, it's actually pretty slick. Um, I have in the past used the UV, put a, like a coat over the whole top. I'm just not sure it needs it. I, I tie this fly as a throwaway fly, it's unweighted and I fish it typically below a dry fly in shallow water, okay? Make sense? Yeah. Awesome. You, uh, I'll take a picture of it and we'll pass it around. That little uh, flashback. Yep. Do you, um, you leave a little bit of tag end out ever? Uh, so what happens is eventually when you hook a fish on this, it breaks it off and it flops up and it looks like a wing. And I just leave it and I fish it th that way it is. In fact, the picture Dan posted on the, on the website for what I call the trash can midge is... Uh, is like that's how that wing came up about because like it just gets knocked off but i think i think with the midge a little bit of flash is good too much might be overkill <clears throat> but I, I do believe and i maybe i've convinced myself of this but i believe that those little fibers when you have a pretty static fly right this little bit makes it catches some attention does that make sense yeah totally. let me see how you're doing here yeah what do you think Looks great. Keep, no, nice. take your line and move it all the way to the back here. It's a nice oh, and then tie, and then flip it over and tie it. Okay. So the or like so, right behind yeah. the arm. Here, let me show you. Take it. Yeah. Oops, that's all right. Go I'll get that for you in a second. We're just gonna go back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks great. Come back forward. One, two, three. Tie it off. Okay. Pull this over the top. Yeah. And tie it off. Okay. Got it. Make sense? Yeah, just give me 10 minutes and I'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how you're doing. <laughs> yeah, looks good. Okay, choke up on this a little bit there. That'll be easier to use. Just uh, half hitch it or whip finish, your choice. Okay. I have whip finisher if you need one. Okay, half hitch. Yep. Maybe let's, if we could review on that. Okay, sure. Half hitch? Yeah. This is how I do the half hitch. Simple, plain and simple. Two fingers. Mm. Oh, okay. Just half of the whip. Yep, half the whip. Got it. Right? Half hitch. And I yeah. just put it there. I hold it in place. Lock it down. Okay. Okay. So the trick is getting this flasher boo thing 
through there, right? Nope. You're, you're, you're you just want it to come forward. Yeah, you want it to come forward over the, over the back. Sorry. Adding, no keep knocking good. your stuff around. No, where I think I So here, like this. Just pull it straight forward. Now pull it down. Okay. Yep. Pull, 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 pull. So pull. I don't need to worry about it getting inside the half hitch. Oh. Perfect. Did I get it? Well, no, I think we missed it, but. Might have missed it. Yeah, well, well, so you wrap over the top of it first with a piece of thread. Right. Over the top. Yeah. My bobbin's going to come along on me. Yeah. Good. And now, because I got to go this way, right? Yep. Okay. Gotcha. And now, some people can do the half hitch. I've been able to do it intermittently with their fingers. Yeah. I, I just use the tool. <laughs> the wood finish tool. Yeah. 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 But like I've yeah. seen them do it where they go like this. They come in and they go. Uh, Lefty Crave was notorious for doing it. He, he went. Uh, yeah, like this. One, yeah. two. And then pulls it tight, but like yeah. to me, I, I can't do it well enough, so I don't do it. Bob Jacklin did it. Yeah, Bob Jacklin. He's like the... Those old guys are really good at that yeah. stuff. Yeah. There we go. Uh, it's a function of not having every tool in the, available to you, right? Yeah. Like Bob Jacklin does a stone fly out of a bike inner tube. Hmm. Have you ever seen that fly? Yeah. It looks great. And it's an old bike inner tube, and he like layers it, and it just lays down like the segments on a stone fly. Wow. Yeah. I was like, you know, mother. Wow, and the materials weren't around way back when. Right? Ingenuity is the mother of invention, right? <laughs> so when I when I tie midges, when I tie midges, I I, I get one of the, I have a small little thing like this, and especially when I'm loading up uh, beads. Mm. Uh, I, I just load up a bunch of beads right off the bat and put them there and then I just tie the midge because the tying the midge is relatively simple, right? Mm. Yeah. So our next one is going to be the evolutionary step off of this, okay? And it's going to be uh, a bead headed string thing, okay. right? Yep. This is, aside from putting the bead on the hook, the simplest fly you will ever tie. And it is very, very effective. Okay, again, I tie it in olive. I tie it in blood, which is my favorite one, blood red. I tie it in cream and I tie it in black. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and, and what it beads on I just put all the beads on. So take one off for yourselves. Oh. I have a small, I have a, um, I have a These pair beads of beads. Are tiny, tiny. Yes, um, this is the company I get them from. And you can get them in different colors. Like for instance, olive. Oh, wow. Yep, uh, here's black, here's red. Sexy. Opalescent, this is opalescent. Uh, and then, um, that's, I think this is a major girl. They have root beer. Can you pass one of those down? <coughs> sure, sure. I want to get a picture of that. <clears throat> yeah. Bears, beans, bitch. Yeah. But uh, Killer Caddis beads, they, they sell them too. You know, I think uh, the Nelsons, they got the Killer Caddis ones. And uh, down here at Dan Bailey's, they got. And then uh, Mr. Reiner down here at Hatch, Hatch Finders has a pretty good fly tying selection as well. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I go to the craft store and oh, yeah. beads. Oh, yeah. By the way, Are Michael's. Yeah, Michael's, yeah, it's that's fantastic. Where it. yeah. That's where yeah. I get these these blue mats for. It's a little bit easier on my yeah, eye. No kidding. Except for these beads are a lot bigger than those. These these are these are step tiny. Step yeah. yeah. So I, when I buy them, I buy them by the thousand. Wow. And so they're relatively inexpensive. And what they'll do is they will add to the fly a little bit of weight. So with the plastic uh, opalescent beads, this is a mid water column fly right so it'll get you down to a certain point right mm -hmm. i also tie this in with a black tungsten head which i want to fish on the bottom mm -hmm. so three different weights to fit three different fishing opportunities Are make sense black ones here, tungsten? no no i got tungsten with me though i got should i buy they're expensive yeah i know but like so like i buy them but you buy them tiny too one mil yeah. right wow. you know? Yeah, <clears throat> but but I will tell you, when you put it on a rig, and the fish 
in particular, and I'm speaking from the Spring Creek experience that I that I'm that like sometimes those the difference of where those fish are feeding in the water column is six inches. Mm-hmm. And so with the, the the next one we're gonna tie with this bead, mm-hmm. this one will ride up off the bottom. And my rig is typically a heavily weighted scud or a heavily weighted size twenty uh, midge, two split shots above it, so it sits like this. And then this this fly will float up here a little bit. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. So I'm covering, and it's like 12 to 16 inches. It's kind of spread out. The heavily weighted is at the bottom. No, the heavily weighted one is the yeah. anchor fly, and this one comes off the back and will float yeah. up a little higher. Yeah. Mm. It, it actually <clears throat> floats. It doesn't this float. One. I wouldn't call it float. It just doesn't it sink just, as fast. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. and so. When so I, it's sinking slowly, so it's up in the water. And this heavy one is down, and then, so to me, uh, I learned this from Tucker Nelson. Uh, he spreads his nymph rig out a little bit, right? So where I would normally have a 12-inch tag off the back, his is maybe closer to 16. Mm-hmm. And then and then Catch his that. second, first fly, tag fly, and then up here, and so like, his uh, and what i think and i'm just speculating but what i think it is is it spreads it out and when he runs it through a hole instead of it coming at you like this it's coming at you like this mm-hmm. does that make sense yeah. and if you have something like a little flash on one of them or like get some attention to them. Hmm. Mm-hmm. that's how i I've, I've rationalized it in my own very small brain <laughs> yeah make sense yep yeah. this flashback string thing is um is a staple in my box. I guide with this fly. I on the spring creeks. This is like, like sometimes those fish will be in like eight inches of water over a bed of seagrass or bed of a, a lodia, which is a aquatic a plant, and they'll just be sitting there feeding. You'll see them, and you're like, uh, this one unweighted is what I go to on that, and I'll put it underneath an olive, or I'll put it underneath a, a hair ups dangling midge. And it floats right above the seagrass, does not get hooked up mm. in it. Occasionally it does. Mm-hmm. That's how you know you're doing it right. Mm-hmm. But I've caught a lot of fish and big fish on this, this fly. It has just a little flash on it, a little movement, and, and red, olive, black, or whatever. Nice. Okay? Yeah. So let's let's do the next one. So y'all got uh y'all got Again, I missed the finish on this one, your okay. flash. You just cut it a little cut, bit. Cut it off. Yeah. Excellent. Right right down at the right down at the fly. Oh. Yep. Okay. So it's like a shell back. I got you. On this one. Thank okay. You. Great. So we'll just toss that there. Uh this you can fill a box with these very quickly. Um, out Slough Creek, Lower Slough Creek, the fish love midges. And so I fish similar patterns on Slough Creek as I do the Spring Creeks. Um, the tungsten beaded ones I use on the Big River. And I'll tie them up to 16 black and copper. Hmm. 16 black and copper. Right, on a, on a jig head and I dump it beneath a chubby. And that, that fly last year on a 16 with like a 2.3 mil uh, tungsten bead. Copper. Copper wire, black thread, string tail. So jig head, it's coming down like this. Exactly okay. right, gotcha. underneath it, right? Hook yep. up, and I'll put it on 18 inches below a chubby, all black, all olive, all with the copper wire as the rib. And that, that especially. All, all black and, and copper wire. Copper bead. Copper bead and. Copper wire, black thread. That's it. Yeah. Wow. And tungsten will take it straight down. Yeah. It's kind of like a Pertagon nymph at that point because it's a little bit bigger, but I think all these flies kind of like meld into one another, mm-hmm. right? Because they're like, I mean, there's only so many combinations we can do here. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've recently saw, I've been counting flies here, and I saw one, it was like, uh, it was a completely different name, but it was a 20 incher with a, with a pink head. And I was like, that's a 20 incher with a pink head. Just call it a 20 inch with a hot thing. <laughs> um, so, but, uh, okay, so the next one, we'll tie with a plastic bead, and we'll do two with plastic. the plastic beads. One will be the, um, the string thing, 
The next will be the, the what I call the garbage can midge. And the story about the garbage can midge is at the end of my fly tying sessions, that's one of my clean up. Mm. And typically there's a little pile of like usable stuff that you can't put on the roll or back on the feather or whatever. And I, and I try to tie a frankenfly out of it. Hmm. And uh, that frankenfly, this one turned out to be kind of like money for me, mm -hmm. right? So we'll tie that one next, but let's just quick. Yeah, grab one, grab, grab one of those. Actually, yeah, grab one and we'll, we'll, then we'll do another one. You want me to grab, take one of these beaded flies? Yep. Okay. Yep. And put it in your, your vise and then, um, so tie it in red. If I, if I had to tell you, like there was one color that was magic, it would be red. Mm. And I believe that's true. I met a man named Fran Betters, who's a very famous New England fly tire. And he used to tie almost all his nymphs with red heads. Mm -hmm. And I asked him why, he's like, just works. Just works. Fran Betters is largely uh, credited with coming up with the predecessor of the Comparadon. Have you ever mm -hmm. heard of a Comparadon? Sure, sure. Yep. And it was a fly he tied called Haystacks. He's on the west branch of the Osable River. Mm -hmm. Got one in? Yeah. Red thread. Uh, red thread. Right behind the bead, go all the way back to the tail, give yourself a little tag in to snip it short. Okay. Behind the bead is towards the hook. Towards the hook eye. Got it. Yep. Those are really quick to, to tie. Towards exactly the hook right. eye. So right behind the, the bead, tie but, in. But like not on the eye side. No, no. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. on the, on the yeah. back side of the bead. Right? <laughs> Yeah. They're really easy to tie and they are like, they are, this is a guide fly. All right. So okay. you might have heard that. I've done things like what works best, crystal flash body or thread or whatever. And I, what I've come to realize is just the red thread is fine. <laughs> okay. So all the way back down the bend of the hook, use that tag end to help guide those, uh, to, you got red, good, to tie those, um, those, uh, Wraps. Wraps right next to each other. Give yourself a mill to two mill at the end. Chop it. Splay the fibers. Back up, back down. Loose wraps up. Tie it off. No spinning. Nope. Oh, yeah. Spinning spinning on the... the um, yeah, rib. the rib. Right. Back. And here we're going to add to it a little bit of um, ice dub behind the collar. Now, this is the key. Touch it with your... Get your finger wet, keep the ice dub from falling off your fingers. You're not gonna use that much. A little trick I use is I, I clip the end of my dubbing. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's all right. Back up. And then go back down. Mm -hmm. Did you did yeah, you leave your tag yeah. in? Yeah. Okay, go good. Down. How you doing? Yeah. I, I think okay. okay. Yeah, it looks I mean great. you'll be the boss of that. I'm not a boss. I'm a student. Yeah. You're you're a boss man. <laughs> Opinions vary. <laughs> that's good. Now, good. All the way back. Now are those the loose wraps going on? No, this oh. is my one oh, first time back up. Okay, yeah, okay, great. And then back down and then loose wraps, yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. A lot until you make it kind of ropish. <coughs> so and then loose wraps up to the bit. Okay, one back time back down again. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some legs to this, right? And so in Richard Park's book from Park's Fly Shop down in the, um, down in uh, uh, Gardner, Richard Park says, that it, that it, uh, an exact replica is not as important as a generalization. Mm -hmm. and, and I have found that to be true, that generalizations typically catch more fish than very complex patterns. And so like when you look at like Joe Brooks Stonefly, it's deer hair on top of yarn. On to this yarn, on top of yarn. chenille yarn. Yeah. To this day, Pat's rubber legs is probably the number one producing fly on the Yellowstone. The turd with the tail. Yeah. We added a tail to it, right? Yeah. It Generalizations work. And so you say, Jan, how are we going to put legs on a size 20, 22, 24 fly? And so what I think, one product I think really does well by that is called Hairline uh, Ice Dub. We've all probably heard of it. And if you look at it, it's real stringy. And I look for the stuff that's got really long fibers like that. You see all, can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at this, right? And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just pass them around to you guys. What you're gonna do is take like just a little bit, just a little bit like this. I, 
So I, here's a little trick to you. Clip the corner of yeah, your dubbing like if you guys that. do that. that. You don't have to dig in through there. I did there. not know oh that. God, okay. I could have used I'm that trick a, a bit. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so just like grab five or six fibers, just like this, right? Can you all see that? Right? And then put them on and loosely spin them on the line. Here, pass, pass some of this around. Here you go. Thank you. See if you can grab that. Should be a bunch of it there. And just loosely spin it on the line, right? And then put it behind the bead, right? And, and then what I do is I like, typically I have a little toothbrush at home and I'll just kind of scrub it with a toothbrush. And then all of a sudden these little legs like this pop out. It'll be loose still when you spin it on here. Yeah, it'll spin it right. Yeah, yeah. Here, let's let's back this off a little bit. Pull that down. Spin it around though. Oh God, I'm spinning the wrong. That, like that. There we go. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Good. Now just wrap. So, yeah. There's more of it right That's here, good. Nasty. If you need more, so just you now wrap that around under behind the. There you just go. Just behind the eye. Just behind the eye. Yep. Yeah. And it dresses it super nice, and mm -hmm. it does this. Remember, like I, I like I like micro movement because it's really a static fly. It doesn't. Yeah have a lot on it so something that's just doing this and because of the nature of the material it flashes light too right it's a little reflective mm -hmm. how you doing dave you can see yours that's perfect look at that how lucky that looks that's nice yeah that's great so later on just go in the brush, 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 brush it out yeah. did i put too much on there no you fine you can always pluck some of them yeah that's what i saying. right and so now you got legs on a size 20. It's really easy to adapt this to a 22, a 24, an 18. It's just a matter of how much material you use. Make sense? Yeah. Great. Do we whip pinch this now? I do. Right yeah. behind the bead. Okay. Or or half hitch or the glue or whatever, whatever uh, little technique you want to use. Anybody got a half hitch tool? I mean, a I got a whip finish tool uh, for you. He's got one. We can share. Thank you. Nice, beautiful fly. So uh, one of the things when I'm working this small, if you have hemostats that have the very tiny, mm. the pointed things, make a big difference putting the beads on. Oh yeah. Mm. And so what I do is like if I like I tie some. There's a fly we, we tie called uh, the Blood Blister Midge. Here, it's black red. Two beads on it. I just sit down in front of the television <laughs> and do this like for an hour or whatever. Listen to music. And uh, and I just that's all I do, and then I load them up in my my midge case, mm. and then they can just pop right out. That's a good idea, right? So uh, where is it? Here it is. Look, the Wapsi makes a one mil tungsten bead like that, and I buy I, I try to buy between five hundred and a thousand of them because. Typically I have friends that want them or whatever. You must have these all over your house. I, I gotta be real careful because I have a wife and a daughter and three dogs and like, uh, so um, I am kept very aware if my area of work is not neat and tidy. So, uh, so uh, you have one with the glass beads. We can, I can load up some, uh, some other ones cool. with these. We're gonna, we're gonna use them for another pattern here in just a, a little bit. But though I'm gonna teach you the trash can midge, which is kind of like one of my little babies. You know, I I uh, I think there are tons of flies that look exactly like it, but this one came out of a pile of feathers and junk <laughs> on the side of my fly tying thing, and I thought I feel like Dr. Frankenstein, right? <laughs> um, so uh, again, grab one of these with the bead on there. Uh, pass them around. I hate throwing away fly tying material, even the stuff oh, yeah. you use stuff. I'm like, oh, that's precious. <laughs> so, so look, every, every dead animal on the rough side of the road, I'm going, I've stopped. Oh, wow. oh my God. My mother, my mother uh, <laughs> opened up the freezer one time and there was a dead fox in there because the, uh, in where I grew up, there's a hatch of mayflies called the Hendrickson. The Hendrickson in its original format calls for urine burned fur from the bottom of a fox. Oh my God. Yeah. So I thought I'd be cheeky. And, do, and get it. So I picked up the whole fox, I put it in the freezer, and then like 30 minutes later, my mom went down and uh, the yelling that ensued was. So like, 
CDC, <laughs> I'll give you an example of like what I salvage, right? So CDC is expensive. This was probably eight bucks for this little thing of feathers. These are feathers from a duck's butt, basically, called the canard, right? But you only use the tips of them. So what I do is I take my little scissors, I make a pile, and then I cut it off, off the rest of the stuff and make dubbing out of it. Mm. Ah. You cut it off the stem? Yep. Okay. Ah, that's smart. <clears throat> and then so I got a little Dixie cup like this, and it sits up there, and this is all, and we're gonna use this for the dry fly version of what we're doing here in a second. We'll put it into a dubbing loop, spin the dubbing loop. This is a pattern I stole from a British man named Davy McPhail. You know who Davy McPhail is. I watch it. Yeah. The YouTube videos. The guy's my hero. Yeah. There's, <laughs> and um, if you get the chance, go to YouTube, Davy McPhail. His, not only are his patterns beautiful, they're from England, but his technique is immaculate, how he ties things in. <laughs> and that's what I learned from there. I used to play a drinking game uh, called Davy McPhail's Nice and Tight. So, because he'd be tying a fly, and he'd be like, um, okay, nice and, nice tight, and tight. tight. You know, he's British. <laughs> and he says it like 10 times in a 15 yeah. minute video. Nice right. and tight. In the, yeah. And so, you. That would be a fun drinking game. It was a drinking game. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, so, that. All right. So, we all got a new, got a new one in. I'm going to take, so we're going to use gray thread this time. Okay. And instead of. Instead of um, instead of the little tail trick, we're gonna use that tag end for the ribbing. And I'll show you the trick for the ribbing when we get there. But don't cut it off at one mil. Make sense? So we're gonna use gray thread. Can you pass down the gray yeah. thread? Yeah. Thank you. I just I just need one to get started and then I can pass pass my version mine off, okay? So great thread. A lot of these midges in here if you look at them, they they're light colored, right? And there there's some that are black and, they, and so uh my family bought one of those little uh pools that you the round mm -hmm. ones, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember what it's called, contacts or something like that. But what came with it was a dip net to clean the pool with. I immediately took it down and started skimming the, the <laughs> skimming the Spring Creek with it uh, because oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> hey, that's cool. All right. Well, Hold on. Okay. Okay. Good. So this this one starts. You can see that we're like I'm just kind of building on mm -hmm. a platform of skill set here, right? So we'll need Sharpie two here in just a second. We'll pass those around. It's not in it. Here, here, you take this one, I'll take that one. <laughs> and that's to me. Quite a few, uh, yeah, wraps on it. That's something I don't do enough is go and look for bugs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's a valuable, F, it's a valuable, um, what's going on with this one? Um, it's a valuable, I think it's valuable. I like to do it. I actually was at the local um, thrift store in town here, a curated closet, mm -hmm. and they had a dissecting microscope there. I bought it mm. for wow. 25 bucks. I have a bunch of microscopes that the school's thrown away. Yeah. I'm so glad you told me <laughs> to look at bugs underneath. I, 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 bring, I get the little pucks that you put your flies in. I'll collect some flies. I'll bring them home, and I'll just take a look, put them with some water, oh, take a look at them. My daughter and I used to love to do it. She's 12 now, and there's nothing she likes to do with me anymore, but. <laughs> Give her a few years. Yeah. <laughs> when she turns 24. Right. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, only yeah. 12 so, like, years. She, she'll, like, realize that dad knows what he's talking about. Well. Well, we'll we can go see. that far. But. Yeah. <laughs> it took me Maybe long she'll long just realize years. I'm not there to kill spiders and lift heavy objects. <laughs> Super handy. You should change light bulbs. <laughs> All right, good. So behind the behind the, the hook eye, right? Yep. I'm gonna pass this off to you in just a second. Right? So this, all the way, to, okay. Give yourself a long tag on this one, okay? Long tag, so like start out like this. Long tag, okay? Like this, we're gonna go all the way down. And are we going, so I'm at the barb, do I need to go around? The curve of the hook. Yeah, go around the curve of the hook because all midges tend to be a little. And I'm gonna go get those books because they have pictures in them. Got that curve. Same thing. One, two, three, all the way down, like this. I'm gonna go back down, and then instead of loose wraps, you're gonna come back on a fourth pass right next to each other. Okay. 
we go up and down the hook chain? Yep. Like we did Four, times. Four times. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, you know, can, this thread gets old. Yeah. How can, how can you tell? Uh, I, I, what I what I what I do is I make sure like if we've been twisting it a lot, it'll break a little bit. Uh, then then thread pressure is always good. Yeah. So uh, the trick on this one is um, take a black magic marker on that tag end like this, ah. and now you're gonna get your rib. Right? Wow, look how slick this comes out. That is nice. You got a nice gray undercarriage with this. I tie it off. I'm gonna pass this off to you in just a second. Like that. You can just pop this off like that. And then I just do a little piece of, I like the wing on this one. I tie in a wing. like this, just tie it in, nice and easy, right? Black crystal flash, couple three strands. There's a little too much on there, but. Like this. And I put one underneath the wing just to make it pop up a little bit. I cut it off at three mil. So you leave a little, little sort of about half the, half the shank length? Yeah, half, yeah. half, well, even, I think that's a great marker. Okay. Uh, even less sometimes, less. yeah. And so then I'll just, I'll just, we finish this, I'll pass this off to you. Is the crystal flash on top of the legs? It is. Okay. It's underneath, sorry. The underneath. crystal flash goes over the top. I'll take a picture and send it around here in just a second. Crystal flash goes on top of yep. the legs. Yep. This one I fish, like, um, there is a hatch of, uh, I fish this at Armstrong's, this fly at Armstrong's, underneath a uh, dry fly. Um, you know how you got the big flats right where you park? You come out, yeah. down, it hits the thing, makes a 90 degree turn, then down toward the red barn. At the tail end of that pool, there's a big trench, right? And this underneath, and in, in, in those flats, those fish will be rising early in the morning to midges mm -hmm. in the summer, right? And you'll see the, sometimes you'll see just tons of the shucks on the water, but this underneath a small dry fly, appropriate dry fly, wouldn't put it under a chubby, but I'd, I'd fish it underneath a hair ups hanging midge, uh, a, a big olive, a small Adams fly even. Mm -hmm. And I fish that, and this this fish has caught in a lot. This fly has caught in a lot of fish, and it ended up ended up in my fly box, and it's a joke. Here, there you go. Let me just take a picture. I'll pass it around. And... Uh. And and so I call it the trash can midge. Pass me more of that. Uh, the dubbing stuff. Here we go. Right here. here. We go. Yep. yep. Here you go. Grab just a little. And so it's got little legs. It's got a wing. It's got a nice rib. Remember, uh, those, and what we should really try to achieve with this is uh, our thread wraps that are right next to each other. It makes it nice and smooth. Then use the black magic marker. Okay. Cool. <coughs> Very cool. Okay, uh, okay, and you color the whole thing or you do stripes? No, I just do the whole, I just run it right from the butt all the way up. All I gotta do is make one pass like that. You see how good nice and black it is? Yeah. And I can. wrap it as a, I wrap it as the. Oh, my piece of flash. There you go. Oh, here you go, I got more. I got plenty more where that came from. Okay, so. There you go. So, at, when I bring the, the black back, is my thread, should my thread be back up at the top? Yep. Okay. So, yeah. Just bring it up there. Okay. Okay. You have that flash. There you go. 
Ooh, that's looking good. Doesn't it look great? Yeah. I thought, holy cow. That's crazy. Right. So I'm not. I'm sure somebody else does this. I, I, just, I just don't know who. Because it can't be that simple and not that discovered, right? Wow. And then I just tie it off behind the, the head of the bead. Okay. You know, Jan, this might be your, your, you know, your, your claim to fame. Your, your thing, right here. You know what people say? It's like, Jan, we need you to write your bio. And the first uh, sentence I say, Jan Axel is a jackass of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> Master of none. Way to keep expectations low. I know. Well, realistic. Manage, managing <laughs> expectations. Realistic. So you want to rip, to, rip back up to the bead, then crystal flash. Then put your flashaboo down, two okay. wraps to hold it in place, dub on the ice dub, and wrap it around. Okay. That'll lash it down. And then on your last wrap, slide it underneath the wing so it pops the wing up like this. Okay, flashaboo on. Oh, I got it. All right. So, so, um, so do you you don't you don't tie back down the body with the crystal flash? You just let nope. This, I just let it float up there in the in the wind with this. Uh, um, what do you call this pearl stuff? I forget. Oh uh, yeah, it's flash of boo. Flash, flash of boo. boo. It's yeah. flat. Uh, the crystal flash is kinked, mm -hmm. which has its own uniqueness uh, to it. But flash of boo is this kind of nice flat. Yeah. yeah. And you really want it to sit right on top? That's all I like it. So I start it on the side. Uh -huh. Here's the trick. Yeah, I got and you. allow the tension of the thread to pull it pull up under this time. Let's see. So side towards me. Yeah. In I the meantime, you. I'm going to load up some, uh, I'm going to load up some pupa hooks for our next, our next fly uh, with some tungsten beads. Okay. We're not going to do that dry fly deal. Yeah, we, we're going to do that, but I want to teach you this one too because this okay. is a this is a good one. And I, I thought about putting it on next week when we're going to do blue wing olives, but uh, betas patterns. How are you doing? What do you need? I have a little dubbing here. Oh yeah, it's it's um we can get you some here in just a okay. second. There we go. Yeah. Thanks guys. Um, but I want to make sure that I have this stuff ready for you here. So. If you want to make this fly pattern heavier, mm. use a tungsten bead. You can also use black wire, tie-in black mm. wire. So now you got a super heavy one, right? The trash can midge. Trash can midge. That's why I call it, and that's it. it it's um. Is that it? right? Is that? Yeah, that's great. Is that that's it? great. And where's the the translucent wing should be right up on top. But that's great. Is it? Is it on top? There it is. Look at that. Okay. Sitting high and pretty. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Beautiful. It's got good legs on that one, right? Yeah. I like yeah. him shaggy. You know, like uh, yeah. Dave Hughes, the famous fly tire Dave Hughes from the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. He yeah. would take his flies and he'd rub them on rocks mm. to get them to fluff up, you know, to like kind of. You ever notice how like a fly that's been chomped on a couple times actually catches a bunch more fish? Mm hmm. And so, again, I think it's that micro movement. That's all right. Thread, bro. Yeah, okay, so when you're midway through in your thread break, oh, how can you salvage it? So what I do is, um, let me just take a look at you. Yeah. And it happens to me all the time, okay? So what I'll do is kind of come down here like this. Yeah. Trash can, I love it, trash can. Bitch. Just pull that off of there. Because it's too much? It. Or? No, no, just because we'll just start over and we won't bulk it up. Oh, okay. Do you want this guy? Yeah. These things are great. Yeah, they are. Just we'll go like this. Sure, it's fun for a wintertime deal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> just wrap right around like that and capture that. Okay. That's how, how I do it. That's okay. what I do. And then they just add a little bit more. Snip these two off. Yeah. And just add dubbing now. Okay. Good tip. Yeah, that's you. You did this thread. I'm thinking it must be done. It's this like the third time. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. All right. I should have bought some more. Yeah. Oh no, this was out of my box. Oh, it is? Right. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, the little brown in there. I, I usually 
he's black, but I like the brown that you that's probably more realistic. So John, you, know, you use these twenties with a longer yes. shank. Yep. Yeah. I, I think it, uh, let me just go get a two X. It's a three X. It's long. a three X. Yeah. Okay. So uh, hold on a second. I brought my reference material with me to share. I'm wondering if you see this this 18 this 18 the gap isn't much bigger than oh this one maybe this one's an 18 see how that one's a 20 and that, that one's a little 18. Little 18, yeah. yeah it's 18 I like I like the 18 better because you got just that much more hook in the middle of the yeah. I don't know but that's what I was going to ask him because you know on 20 I, I lose so many there's so, so many, many fish. You bend them out. <laughs> no, I just they, they just they just don't hook them up and they pull out. Do you, so I'm not. Do you have do you have on your size 20 the fish pull out a lot because yeah, it's just so, it's just so small. Yeah. Um. Do you think they're do they, they make some that are like a wire gap that looks like yes. A, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm constantly like, looking for them. They've got so many hooks. Yeah. Crazy. Both of these, there's two is. different hooks. One's, one's got a little 18 size gap and one has a 20 size So the gap next here. the next hook we're going to use is, uh, here we go, Dipterins. You haven't had that book for a while. Have I've, you? I've got this when I was at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. <laughs> this is the second edition. <laughs> it looks like it's been thumbed over a few times. Yeah, I've used it quite a bit. <laughs> Let me find it. So here are the Dipterins. Right? The dipterins are the chironomids, the true. Here we go. And there's all kinds of families and stuff. So if you page through this, it has the scientific drawings. And I just want to show you something. The next one we're going to, sh the next one we're going to show, see there's the caudal tail. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So the next one we're going to do kind of simulates this, a pupating midge. It's called um, the Cheeseman Emerger. Uh, first tied in for the Cheeseman Canyon mm -hmm. down on the, uh, South Platte, yeah, yeah, and I, and I was, I do a lot of my own fishing during the, um, during the winter, so I, I was kind of always looking for winter patterns, and I bumped across it online, and, and I tried it, and it's, I gotta tell you, it's, it works great for betas too, I'm just trying to get to the, a good picture of a midge for you, but here's a good kind of, those are the adults, here we go. Look, look at some of these. I'll pass it around here in just a second. The dipterins. The dipterins here. Just start looking at these. Um, let me load up a couple here for you. And we're going to tie this one, uh, the Cheeseman Emerger. Again, red, gray, olive. I've tried them in cream, they don't look as good to me. What do I know? I mean, like, olive always works. <laughs> Red always works. Black always works. Yeah. Gray works really well for the midges. All right. Good book. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of that, too. Oh, that's, yeah, that's signing up for the struggle bus. Yeah, it is. Well, I had a bunch of coffee, so I'm shaking like a leaf right now, too, so I'm making it. <laughs> So here, here, I'm gonna give you this one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't drop it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the tungsten. This is the tungsten bead. Mm. And uh, it's, I think, uh, they now you can get tungsten beads in whatever color you want. I'll try to load my own bead there, John. All right. So why don't they make these hooks barbless? I mean, just like... I know. I wonder the same thing. I've been buying partridge hooks because they come barbless. Come on. You know, I, it's the people that were talking about the survivability of fish at the... Um, yeah, it's, they're not saying it's, it's significant. It's not significant. Really? Yeah. Uh, they, they, uh, I took this class called um, Guiding for the Future. And, uh, and and this lady that do scientific you know research on that, and she said the number one thing is you know how long you keep it out of the air. Right. Yeah. And then and then you know not not touching it yeah. as much. Don't get all 
you know, all those people that release it and you watch the fish swim through their hands, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. it's like that, that's like, you know, just because you want one more feel of the fish as mm-hmm. it's leaving, mm-hmm. it's like, just let it go. <laughs> yeah, it makes know? sense. And then, they, and then she said also that, sorry, I'm interrupting. No, you you're know, doing fine. But she said that, I'm pass this one down. that uh, the people that try to revive the fish, I mean, sometimes you, you, you need to do that. But be most of the times, it's right? better just to let them go. Less touch. Yeah. Just let them go. But anyway, I'll shut up. Nope, I didn't knock it. No, it's interesting to hear. It, it is, because we like... It's good to know best the practice. The barb list is, is... Insignificant, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I always fish with barb. Hmm. You know, and because I'd rather catch the fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Myself, and... But I don't know. I mean, what do you think, John? I like to fish in the park, and I, they got to be barbless oh, in the they park. Have to be yeah. Barbless in the park. And so I, um, I've been using for my park flies. I tie on the partridge hooks, which, which come. Uh, I'm not a competitive angler in any state of the, you know, in any defini- definition of the word. But the competition hooks are all barbless, and they're, and so I have to have them for the park. They will. The test is they run cotton over it, and if it snags, you have a barb. Mm. Mm. Uh, and I've heard, depending on who you speak with, they're... Oh, so you better mash them down real well. Yeah, it's more than a mash. I don't want to be the guy that gets written up in the Livingston Enterprise yeah. for, yeah. you know. The other factor is that it's a lot easier to get a barbless in cabin. That's a human true. being. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking, yeah, yeah, I'll still keep, yeah. I'll still keep I'll still keep barbless on a bigger especially. weighted fly. Here I am, like, you know... I mean, I think it's great to, to do barbless. I'm not saying it's bad. I like the idea of it, right? That's the, yeah. But if it doesn't have any significance. Well, if you're guiding, it's great to have barbless hooks with your clients. Yeah. yeah. I started, you know, like, I used to say, like, because I'm from Wisconsin, we have cattle there, but, like, I always used to say, like, you better have earned that cowboy hat before you wear it around here, right? Yeah. And, uh... I started wearing one, and sure enough, this year that brim caught one way out here, as opposed to up in here. Oh, yeah, wow. and I was like, oh, maybe go ahead and give more shade. Yeah. At this point in my life, I got I got to think about like what the sun's doing to me. I've had a few days on the Yellowstone where I've been on the horse, and I've just been like, like the ant underneath mm-hmm. the thing. Um, this one is called the Cheeseman Emerger. Um, you can choose whatever color you want, gray, red, or olive, right? Whatever you got in front of you. If you're gonna use um, gray, take a black piece of crystal flash. If you're gonna use red, use red. If you're gonna use olive, use the green one. Okay. Okay, I like all three of them. I fish olive probably the most, followed second by red. Um, But the gray one is starting to earn a spot in my heart as well, because it looks great. I forgot to load one up for myself here the cheeseman emerger it is as simple as the other ones just a couple of different little um couple of different little techniques in it i always wonder myself like when you think about quality control of one mil tungsten beads, <laughs> yeah. am I going to be the guy that calls them and says, this one's eye is too small? Yeah. <laughs> Need a point oh oh two percent return. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I think they'd probably get blackballed <laughs> for that. For what? Complaining about the eyes on a couple of them being not usable, making them not usable. Come on. All right, I just did four of them. Thanks for loading the bead on. That's yeah. I wish I could do it for myself <laughs> right now. <laughs> very nice. This is the problem with the magnetic, magnetized ones. Sometimes we. Can... Okay, so it's loaded up. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put whatever color thread we want on there, starting behind the bead and going back down the part of the way down the bend of the hook. Can we leave the tag out like we did before? Nope. We can rip it off. Yep. Because okay. we're going to use uh, Crystal Flash as the tail and shell back on this. Hmm. This is a kind of a cool fly. I like the scud looking. Is it a scud looking hook? It can. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very, it's like, yep, it's a curved. You could use it for a scud, certainly, or a caddis. There's a pattern I tie called Willie Dietrich's depth charge caddis that I use the same hook for. 
And I think it looks a little bit like a midge, but it's like a caddis pupa. So go down to the bend. Just go down to the bend. Why is this not working for me here? So after the flood, I have some rod days at Depew's in yeah. end of June, July. Yeah. And I usually fish midges heavily during that time. Right. Zero midges. Wow. I found. Zero. I'm sure hoping they're back this year. I, you know, I watched them rise into midges two weeks ago in the in the okay, flats. Yeah. Right. So That's they're there. Exciting. That's yeah. exciting. I can tell you that. Um, yeah, I, that that'd be one of the. Uh, or a uh, consequence of the flood that has me concerned the most are the eggs from the season uh -huh. uh, the rainbow specifically and uh, and then um, what's it gonna do to insect life yeah I was just gonna ask you what what would you guess well I would say it would it scour it had a scouring effect right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the question is is that you know like I personally fished quite a few and guided a, quite a few of the PMDs in western sulfur hatches this year. Nelson's, which had very little flood damage, had wonderful hatches. And then I saw wonderful midge hatches at Armstrong's this year. Mm -hmm. Like the ones where you see like the, the wads of cases yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's just pretend I have a beat on this one. <laughs> All right. Stillwater River, and it's so. Like it yeah. Moved, it, it moved the channel over sometimes 300 yards. Mm. And, uh, 300? It, yeah, in some places. It, it's okay. a completely different river. Where are we at? So, sand okay. so I think it'll be it'll be interesting, you know, like yeah. the bug life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're down here, right? I think it regenerates. I think it will come back too. I, I don't worry about. I don't worry about whether it regenerates. What I just worry about in the very short term. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use black. It might be easier for me. You see, so you're going to take one strand, right? Yep. Like this, just fit, fold it in half. What do you guys need? Red what, or black? You got red. Yeah, use I got some red. red for me. What are you using, Sam? I, I've got gray thread. Okay, use black. Okay. So if you use red, you use okay. a red. Right. One. I, I use black on the gray one. So I use red on red? Yeah, red on red. So what this is going to be is our tail and our, um, I just dropped mine. Um, it's all right. Uh, this is going to be our tail and it's going to come up the back, right? There you go. This little number has caught a lot of fish, okay? So what I do is I fold it in half, right? Don't worry about anything. Just take it, fold it in half. Again, we're working in small sizes here. And then I'm gonna tie this in at the tail. You can build this body up as much as you want. For for mayfly uh, emergers, I build it up a little bit. For midges, I keep it thinner, right? Okay, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, don't worry about measuring it out. You see the loop? Mm -hmm. See the loop? Mm -hmm. See the loop? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see the loop, okay? All I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it in at the butt, oh, right? Just tie it in at the butt. Look, you see how I got the loop right there? Yep. Yep. Okay, Patty, you see that? Mm -hmm. Right, I'm just going to tie it in like this with one wrap, maybe two, right? So it's just like hanging off the, the butt there, right? right? So the loop is hanging off yep. the butt. <clears throat> okay. Yep. And it's pretty quarter inch sort of deal. Yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna trim it. So gotcha, gotcha. Don't don't even worry don't about. Don't even yeah. think about it. Yeah, no worries. So when we tie these tiny flies like this, it's like all about ease, right? Yeah. It's not like I'm using um, you know I love wood duck flanks. I love them. I love to look at them. Um, I'm not much of a duck hunter anymore. I used to be quite a duck hunter as a kid growing up. But like the lemon wood duck flank is like to me gold. Right, that's the tail feather of the tail uh, of every BWOI tie personally. And I'm real careful with them, right? Like I count how many fibers I'm pulling on. Not this, this is put, slap it on, get it on the best way you can, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure that the crystal flash is riding over the top of the hook, right? Yeah. Makes sense? Now, we're gonna do pinch wraps you know what a pinch wrap is? Mm, so pin, pinch it in place. 
Okay. Okay, you see my hand on there, Pat? Yeah. Okay, look, Patty. I'm gonna go up and I'm just gonna pinch and hold it. Look, now there's no tension on the, the, the string, right? But there's tension on the string at the hook. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna pull it down, right like that, right? My next one is gonna be a loose wrap. Up, pinch, down, pinch, down. Now look how the, the crystal flash rides right up the back of the fly. Mm -hmm. Got my phone? Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. See that? Here it is. So are you, you trying see that? to segment it on the back or are you trying to cover it? I'm just trying to segment it and keep it down so that you can see the flash, the flash, crystal flash right. through those wraps. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So once you tied the loop on, yep. where, did you go up to the top? Yep, I did, but with loose wraps because that's like a shell back. Uh-huh. You're right? On a on anything. And you put and you put this crystal flash on top. Yep. Okay. Keep it right on top of the hook. Okay. It gives it a wonderful glitter. How we doing? Yes. You doing okay? Yeah, you're doing great. Kind it's of. looking good. It's looking good. Good job. Is that okay? Yeah, it looks great. Wait, let's do this. Just clean it up a little bit. You see how it's moved off to the side a little bit? A little bit of a hot mm -hmm. mess. No, yeah, you're fine. Now it's perfect. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Lock this in place with two wraps. One, two. Behind the bead. Yep, behind the bead. Okay. We'll snip that off, right? Snip it off close. The excess there, right? Okay. I'm going to give you some opalescent. Uh, you can use, uh, here, we're going to do this. You still have the. But now I want you, instead of just right. one, I want you to tie like oh, yeah. four, like, like a little tuft. Another way you can put on here is CDC or Zlon or whatever. It's like this for the wing. <laughs> okay. Yep. So we're folding it over. Yeah, fold it over four or five times. I've got a ton of it, so just grab a bunch of it okay. like this. Mm -hmm. Fold. Fold again. This is how you can make one strand go a long way. Okay. Right? Like this, pinch it off, pinch it off, and then just snip one end okay. to tie it in. So now you got this little glittery thing. Okay. You'll tie it in, you'll cut it again short. Mm -hmm. Pass this down. I'll get some more going here. Okay. Or you can, you can like take a hunk of this, cut a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. I just like this, I mean like, I told you about the little pile I have at the end of it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you put it on the top of the hook again. Top and on the hook behind the bead. Just like we tied in the single strand. Yeah. Here we go, Dave. And do you want the looped ends? Either way, because you're going to trim it, right? Okay. And this kind of reminds me of the, the old $3 dip. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly, uh, not Kelly Gallup, Craig Matthews $3 dip. Mm. I don't know that one. That's another midge kind of a merger pattern. And it's the same wing as the three dollar dip. So, just should I? Clip yep, the oh, that's what I do. Yeah, it? it's a little bit easier to manage. Okay. Here you go. Just take that. Oh. You use that as the wing. Well, you already got it on there, right? Is that? Is yep. that too many fibers? I probably. No, you can trim it back. It's fine. That's the great thing about it. Put a bunch of them on there. Yep. So, am I going to tie this in over top of the bead and then cut off the excess there? I tied in right behind the bead, and then we're going to use a little of that crystal. We're going to use a little bit of the ice dub to put a collar on. Okay. okay. You, so you want to trim the back end or the front end? Both. Both. It's a, it should be a short wing, right? Okay. Right. And so um, what I'll do is just quickly get this one up, and I don't have the bead on it because it was having oh, struggling, okay. driving the struggle bus, so to speak. Um, I'll dub it. And this is another one you can tie once you get the bead on. A lot of them rip pretty quickly. Like this. Here we go. Three. Like that. And then I come in and trim this. I like to come underneath it once. Mm, okay. That kind of helps it stand up a little bit. Yep. Like that. Give it a little more dub on there. <coughs> like this. 
okay like that like that like that and then I just trim it relatively short like that little stubby wing and then I take the tail and I leave the tails long on this right but look I come out and I tie it to like that nice. yeah and this little guy has been another really big winner for me, especially during the winter months and during the betas hatch and olive. Betas hatch and olive. Yep. And do you fish it like? Um, I fish it as the either the the, the dropper or the or the heavy weighted one with two split shot above it. Oh, if you do a tungsten. Yeah. Then, but but I, what I want you to notice about this is that that crystal flash that goes all the way up the back. Right? That, and so official bite this, it'll break that one piece of those little few loose wraps. And then you'll just have more flash floating around in there. Okay. But, but I, I think it works just fine either way. And then I just put that little head on there. It looks like legs. I brush it back. I'll whip finish it off. Um, this is the unweighted, you guys have the weighted version. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is the Cheeseman Emerger. It is a staple in my box. Um, and to be honest with you, when I looked through my books, the only place I found it was online. On a video. And it was like one of those top five winter flies for the you know South Platte River. And I was like, well, I mean, if it works there, it probably work here, right? Right. Oh yeah. I love YouTube. Though. I do too, man. It's great. There's when I, when nothing I, you can't learn on YouTube. Oh my gosh! When I started Time Flies, it was like reading the back of the box to figure out uh, my first <laughs> right. book. My first book on fly tying was by a British man named Peter Dean. And the only flies that were there, I show up with these things that look like the cat vomited, and it was like shuttlecock winged and yeah. everything. I was like, why are mine so different than everybody else's? Okay, so this goes that? pretty this, short. Yeah, really short, like. Like that short? Yep. Even shorter. No takey backies. How far back did you? I clip mine. Here, let me take a picture of this one. Right to where the. Bend Actually, I have a, I have a couple finished photos of this. Oh somewhere. dang! I nipped my tail. Oh well, this guy's got a little. He's on the short vest. <laughs> he can sit next to me. <laughs> um, let me see. I know I have pictures of this fly because I've circulated it to all my friends. It's a, I was. Uh, I was fishing in Gardner a few weeks ago. Yeah. And it was a warmer day just below the airport. And there was a quite a substantial midge hatch. Really? Yeah. Oh. It was uh, like I would step in off the bank and all the shells would just be all up mm -hmm. on the road. That's a significant midge hatch. Yeah. And it, wow. So they're still there. Yeah. I was more worried about like the stone flies getting washed out and some other stuff. Yeah. But the midges are definitely still there. <laughs> Good. Let me just find. Uh, it should be yeah, right in here. Uh, here. So here's what it looks like with a, an olive with a gold bead on it. Yeah, I've got some of these in my box. I like uh, I like the black bead though. Mm -hmm. Is my because uh, that beta that beta sniff gets real dark on the surface, mm -hmm. right? Cheeseman emerger. I'm gonna take a picture. Well, why, why don't you just send it to you? You're okay. you're in my you're in my contacts. Okay, cool, love it. And that's for betas. That's for betas. Mm. I, I wanted... So all these subwater, subwater uh, patterns we can adapt to a dry fly too, right? The body is really the same, right? Mm -hmm. We're just going to add a tuft of C CDC, mm -hmm. either in a bubble form or as a straight up shuttlecock wing. Mm -hmm. and it, okay, and then bubble we like add. this. Yeah, the yep. bubble. Have you yep. ever seen any of those bubble back yeah, emergers? Yeah, yeah. Online, I think. Yeah. There's one called the Captive Dunn. Mm -hmm. That really was the one I saw it first on. Yeah. Then I saw the Davy McPhail all around emerger. And I was like, this thing is bomber. So I tie that in PMD. But like the bubble can be difficult at small. Mm. Yeah. But the shuttlecock's super easy. Okay. And so what I brought was some CDC fibers and I thought we would quickly we we do some dries um 
especially in those early morning hatches, this the shuttlecock wing works really well as a dry fly. Mm -hmm. um, it cool. kind of it's kind of like the la have you guys ever seen like the Last Chance Emerger by Rene Harrop at all? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that, but it's just a body. And so pick pick a color, whatever color you want. We'll do a body the same way we have here, and we'll do it on a longer shank hook so we have enough space, and I'll get us all some CDC. Here we go. Thank Pass you. those down. Um, where's the box? Thank you. Okay. What, what is this one now? We're gonna do we're gonna do what we've just done as a dry fly. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, you can either spin the thread counterclockwise and make the rope. Mm -hmm. as the rib or you can use the sharpie trick your choice I think the sharpie trick looks great so this one probably isn't a red it's a olive usually Oliver Oliver gray, gray. is another good one on our spring creeks gray is really good for the dry fly I think red I've, I've fished this in red as well and caught fish and then I'll show you how to do it with, I'll show you how to make another floating entity with a dubbing loop as well. That's the, kind of the fancy way of doing it. That's the Davy McPhail's uh, version. So let's, um, are those hooks down over here? Oh, here they are, right here. I'll put one in and <clears throat> we'll tie one together. And... and this little, this little shuttlecock wing one works really well. I, I did had a very good day on Nelson's in the flat, greasy water with it, mm -hmm. um, and watched 16 to 18 inch fish just come up and sip this thing. I mean, like right in front of us, like from me to Sam away. Mm -hmm. Like they just were focused on it. So we put it in. I'll do it in gray here. Um, so we'll just make a uh, body really quickly. Like this, all the way down. I'm giving myself some space at the eye to tie in the, the CDC, right? Mm. Come on, all the way down. Like this, to right about here. And this, what this looks like is like those midges hang in the surface film with their butts below the water. You all seen pictures of that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come down here like this. Take a marker and go like that. So go down once, leave the tag end out, right? Yeah, uh, I'm doing this one with the marker. You can do it with the counterclockwise spun. Uh -huh. I'm just doing this. And then come back up about a hook eye below. Yeah, give yourself enough space, Dave, to tie in the CDC. We're going to pass that out in just a second. And I would normally probably, uh, with this hook and this, I'd probably build this up, this body up with thread a little bit more than this one is, but I think for the purpose of what we're doing here, understand. So I, I would take one or two um, pieces of CDC here, and I'd match them up. So like this, and we're just gonna use the tips here. We're not gonna go down into the quill, but what you can do is just kind of put them together like so. Okay, once you kind of got them cupped together, or for lack of a better term, spooning, you know? Um, and then um, what I do is I just, I just use a little spittle and I just kind of get, keep it all um, managed like this. See how they're kind of, together yep like this tips are together come on they're not ideally perfectly matched but we should be able to get this done like so I tie it in a little bit longer right oh, come here Then I need it. I've been playing guitar, so my fingers are um, a little calloused. And then I just pull it in like this, and it makes it nice. Then I pull it back to stand it up. Just 
like this. And then trim it off. Mm, nice. Like that, right? Now, I actually brought it. Okay, and then dubbing. Uh, <coughs> A little bit of dubbing, just a smidge here, right? To give it some legs. And you can use more CDC than that, too. Because you, to you want it to float, right? I just used two there. In hindsight, I'd probably go back and do three. And go like this, like this, and then I finish it off in the front. One, two, three, four, five, like that. And that will sit and float just below the surface. Hmm. Nice. Here, let's pass some of these out. Okay. Use three, okay? Bulk it up. You want this baby, you just take three out of there. Match them up the best you can. Put it in, loose tight. Pull it back to the length you want, and that kind of compresses the fibers as well. Pull it back, tie it off in front, tie it around, dub around it. And if there wasn't a if there wasn't a giant Oscar in there, I'd show you how long this thing float. Um, I did it with a bubble back, and we put it on a timer, mm -hmm. red, with uh with just the with the spun thing, and it floated for like three hours in a coffee pot. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm what, not kidding. What'd you do that? To test how long this this fly would last on, and it, now granted that's still water, right? <laughs> right. But it's wax thread, so the thread is not going to absorb a lot of water, and that thing sat in the coffee pot for three hours on the surface. Hmm. CDC, well, I like to call it feathers from a duck's butt. And so that little guy right there, uh, you'd be sh shocked. A lot of times you see this fly with it a little bit more down and pointed north that way. But I like it, it kind of looks like a computer. I do this fly in black and then a little red tag. Oh yeah. Uh, when the midges are in, in their on really flat water, yep. man. <laughs> I'm gonna show you, show you a, a little, uh, well I do it, I, I, you know, so like the trash can midge there, I do that one in all black too. That one works really well for me, but black is like a, that thing is money. Yeah. Black, olive, red. Do you yeah. fish that behind like a like an indicator dry fly or uh, like so, a smaller Sometimes dry? when I'm feeling my eyes are working yeah. well, I just fish it by itself. Okay. Because you'll see that thing standing up. Let me see if I can. Especially in the really flat water. Yeah. In the really flat water, right. I wouldn't fish that in no. a, I would not fish that in a, Exactly right. We're going to do a little. And I fish it on a 12 foot leader, taper down to like 6x. Right? So it's not really great in the heavy wind either. Oh, yeah. So it's a delicate presentation. Yep. Uh let me just tie this off and we'll do a little experiment to see how long this one lasts with the shuttlecock wing. Have you ever heard of a fly called the student? No, I haven't heard that one. It's kind how you of doing? like this but with a tail also. Oh really? And uh during uh, on the bighorn um, for a betas hat, a real finicky fish. Oh, yeah. mm. See how that sits with the butt down? It is. That's it is. exactly like how a midge rides. Hmm. We'll see how long it lasts. I'm not suggesting it's gonna go three hours, but I'm gonna I'd be willing to bet. And you hit that with uh, frogs fanny or. Uh, which is my favorite thing. Don't do not use uh, Aquel on CDC. Mm. It take it will just mash it down into nothing. So hmm. any flies with CDC, just use the um, right, that's exactly the shake. yeah the shake right. Okay. Well, 
Let's take a look. Any suggestions before I Let's back it off a second? Come on off the hook. That's right. Put, put the hook back in. Okay. Okay. Just back it off. Take it all off. Okay. Nice and easy. Well, you're right there. You're right there. Maybe the wing needs just to be a little shorter. Okay. So pull it back off a little bit. So just, just pull it out here. Yeah. Pull it from the yep. back end. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Right there. Right there. Okay. okay. Right, too big of a Two wraps to kind of. Okay. Good. Now pull it back. Good. I'm gonna trim off that excess so you don't have to deal with it. Okay. Good. Peacock probably works better than black, right? I, I like it black. I like it peacock. I like the black and blue. Um, sometimes I'll even use like the um, uh, olive. Depending on, I have some light gray that I really like, UV gray. Or if I want a really light colored one. That's the beauty of it now, man. Like you can like change the bead, Variations right? Are like mm -hmm. Change the bead color, change the the well, CDC one, color. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Still. Wow. How are we doing? Okay, that's fun. I think I want. Still floating. Still floating. Oh, yeah. Still, Still floating. floating. It is crazy. Yeah. The thing is, with the CDC flies, you got to be real careful about the other materials you put on the hook, right? Because what we're talking about is it like it keeps its like um structure out right as opposed to it, it traps air right and so like things like wire can drag it under mm. so <coughs> that's why i like the um sharpie trick on the tag end absolutely and that keeps it real light you think it's just too much dub on that no i think it's yeah. i think it's good i mean we can go look at some of these in the in the bins over here and you'll see that even production file let me take put it in my hand no, I think that's great. Okay. In fact, you could bulk up the body a little bit, okay. right? So uh, sometimes, like when I when I go up and down, up and down, mm -hmm. then I'll go halfway back, halfway back, uh, and that kind of okay. makes little, that transition little, a little nicer. A little taper. I think that fly would, okay. I think that fly would catch a fish on any of our spring creeks, awesome. as it's tied right now. What what one is this called again? Well, this is just a this is just a midge um, dry. Some people call it the miracle midge. I've heard it called the duck fly before. Thank you. You were looking for it. I had it. We're getting there. Yeah, I see that. You're doing good. Miracle midge. There you go. There we go. Yeah. I like how you think, Patty. Arthritis man is catching up with me. <laughs> it's so frustrating. I. I think you're doing great. We're getting there. This is fun. Man, you are teaching us a lot. This is it's awesome. Thank you. Next week we'll do some more. Hmm. I think nice. I put too, too tall of a... doesn't matter. I don't think so. I, if you look at like Harrop's design, Harrop's design stands way up. Mm -hmm. And to me, Harrop, Rene Harrop, his work on the um, Henry's Fork is with this kind of CDC is the best. Mm -hmm. It's to me, I read his books. I mean, I, anything I can find by him. Yeah. Here, this one is one of his newer ones, a compilation of um, how he does CDC and works with CDC. This book was fantastic. The bidges in here are very cool. Look at, like, you notice where I, like how I told you, like, he doesn't, there's no excess metal on it. He uses a light wire hook. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything along the way goes to allowing the CDC to float it, mm -hmm. right? Now that one's still going, it's not even moved, yeah. right? And then um, here's the pattern. So like, this is the this is the one I was telling you about called the, um, the bubble back there. That's yeah. the, um, what he calls the uh, uh, captured done. Mm -hmm. This fly in 16 in yellow, Will will crush any <laughs> any hatch around. Hmm? Yeah, so like you like to fish the if you fish this hatch, this this one is always in my box. I tie it to, to the letter how he does it. Mm, okay. That capture done sits right in the film, and they're just like, I mean, I've had right, like beginning fly anglers catch fish on the spring creeks with that fly. Oh, and mm. they think it's so easy. Yeah, well, I mean, I have to explain <laughs> to them. I'm like, it's not always like this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, I want to. Yeah. We want to, I'll just see if I can find some of his midges. All this fly fishing stuff. Yeah. So tough about My friend Willie Dietrich, I've guided with him for 20 years. He lives in Vermont. 
he and I got it together for years in, in, the, in the Northeast. And uh, he one time had a, a lady catch like a 20 inch fish on a size 20 BWO. And th that doesn't happen in Vermont very often, right? And he goes, he looked at me, he goes, I think you should quit now. Because <laughs> you just joined the 2020 club and it's your first day. Oh my gosh. <coughs> Are you from the Northeast? I'm originally from Wisconsin. Uh, I am from Portage, Wisconsin, at the edge of the Driftless region. I have a flat head and wide shoulders from carrying canoes. <laughs> Generations of Wisconsinites. Um, let me find the Mitch. Just to pass around some photographs of some of the things that I find uh, inspirational to this sort of stuff. This book is great. His other one is... But he uses CDC. And, and like, we'll be here... Until we're finished, that fly will still be floating in there when we're finished. I mean, it's just threading CDC. Yeah. It doesn't have to be complex, right? I said earlier today that Mr. Park's book um, on the patterns about generalizations are far more effective than lookalikes. And so I love tying the lookalikes. I love doing that stuff. If you saw the golden stonefly I tie, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty good but it doesn't catch fish as well as the rubber legs does. <laughs> it drives me nuts. You know, I got a tungsten bead in there. I got the horns going out. I've got the beautiful <laughs> shell back with the thin skin wrapped with the appropriate white. It doesn't work as good as the, the turd, hmm. right? And I hate to say that, but it's absolutely, unequivocally true. Here it is. Here's, here's his midges, this tra transitional gray. See how little there is on that fly. That's an awesome fly. Yeah. Mm. We'll pass this book around. You guys can take a look at it. It'll allow me to get set up for the next dry fly we'll tie. Sure. And so this one is, uh, this one we're going to tie is from Davey McPhail. Um, my, uh, the guy is amazing. He's just an amazing guy. He's on YouTube. You can take a couple, one of those. And um, he ties this with a dubbing loop. Well, they call them buzzers on the other side of the ocean. Um, but and they're a little bit bigger. They find them in lakes a lot, but I think this pattern is really kind of cool because all it is is a basic dubbing loop, right? A basic dubbing loop, and then what he does is he puts a little cider on the back end of it, and I have some yellow. Uh, I'm, I'm notorious for um, uh, scavenging the uh, salesman in fly tying shops, <laughs> uh, and so uh, um, uh, Dan Bailey's had a bunch of old CDC on on sale. I got this whole thing for like nine bucks. Mm -hmm. It's usually twice that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. keep an eye out for that stuff. We'll just put a little cider on. It'll be easy. It's just like tying in a wing. Then we'll tie a dubbing loop. We'll put the, the CDC dubbing into it. And then we'll just wrap the dubbing loop, tie it off. Mm -hmm. And then what he does is he strokes the, the CDC fibers up so that it's flat on the bottom. And what is this fly significant? Uh, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, it's a, midge. A midge, you could tie it as a sulfur too. I mean, I, I, what I do is I put like, I put the bubble on and then I put like a hair wing on it and it floats like a cork and the butt and I tie it on a caddis hook. So the butt sits down in the water and it's got um, the, the lemon wood duck with a buy it uh, tied. Uh, maybe I'll do that one once we get closer to PMD season. The, I have pictures of it on my phone, but uh, the, the abdomen with um, squirrel hair in the thorax because it's real spiky. Mm. It's become one of my favorite natural dubbings mm. is uh, squirrel. Mm. And I get it in bleach, ginger, black olive. And it, but the bleach ginger looks great on a PMD and it's all like, <laughs> like this. Mm. All right. We all got, we all got um, a hook for the next one. Yep. So let's tie your body up again however you want to tie it. The body, uh, there's a number of ways we can do it. We went through two major ones today, the Sharpie and the um, twisted line, but you can add a piece of wire underneath it if you want to. I think this fly would probably hold it up and that'll create a great dubbing. Like, I mean, I brought some red wire that I use for midges. The one I tie for the shop is the blood blister midge. We didn't do that one today, but look how thin this is, wire is. Yeah. Why don't you pass that around? It's great stuff. It's UTC. Oh my gosh, it is thin. But let me show you how it looks on a fly.
they make one extra small oh, too. Okay, yeah. They use that like real thin tinsel. Yeah, you, you can know? do that too, right? It's real thin, real thin tinsel. That's of wire. the wire on it. It it's, makes great. It's wow. a little like the crystal flash you can see through. Yeah. All right, so let's build a body. Now this time we want to leave. We want to use that 3x hook. We're gonna. We want to use that uh, to our advantage, right? So leave yourself some space because we're gonna tie a dubbing loop. Remember. And we're also going to put in a little cider piece. Okay, okay so um, I'm going to go two more eye links, three eye links back. And I'm going to go down. Black, okay? Black's fine, whatever you want to use for the body. Right now, what, I'm, what I tried to do today was I tried to give you some ways to build your body, mm -hmm. some ways to build your thorax, how to tie in certain kinds of wings. Now I'm just, you know, you know how to tie your bodies. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just trying to show you how to make the dry wing. So are you starting almost mid chain? I, I'm going, yeah, I would say I'm going 25%. I wouldn't say, but remember, we're going to, we're going to use that whole front 25% for our, our, um, dubbing loop and our cider. So I'm going to actually come down the hook, uh, shank a little bit farther on this. I go back up. I'll make a couple passes on this just to give it a nice body. Just the right size class. So yeah, it's nice. You have too it's many perfect. people and everybody's. Mm -hmm. It's it's full to dry. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do another one. I'm here all week, so we'll do them. However many cool. people want to come, we'll do them. So. Thank you for. Oh, I'm happy. I love this stuff. Are you kidding me? Okay, so we're just doing the body up and back. And <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put a little uh, uh, sharpie marker, um, rib on this, just to give it some look. So if I use black thread, how do I the twist? The twist. Gotcha. Gotcha. Or, you taught us that. Or um, use some of the black UTC midge wire, right? This. Yeah. I think that this wing will hold this fly up. And so what Davey McPhail does on this, if you, you'll find this on one of his videos, right? It's his midge emerger, um, is he'll tie all the bodies up first, just mm -hmm. like this. He'll have a whole like thing full of bodies and then um, he'll come in and put on the wings afterwards. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so the cider, we're just gonna use some pale yellow. I'm just gonna take a couple of them. This will make it easy to see, and then we'll switch over to the the dubbing that I, the cup of dubbing that I brought. Okay. Um, these. And so here, they just stroke it back. It's just going to be a little tuft here on the back end, so that I can see it. Because so I put it in pinch dub or pinch wrap like that. Come on. I got these calluses on my fingers from playing guitar lately, so. Um, just like this. It's gonna point off the back. And I'm just gonna make it nice and short. Ah, Jan, you screwed it up. All right, hold on. Section's okay. overrated, right? Well. You can also use a little piece of foam. That might work as well on this. Just like that, a little, little cider. Make sense? So is that off the bend of the hook or mid shank? No, that's like, it's like 25% down from the, okay? Just like this little yellow there. Okay. And I'm just gonna lash it down real good. And I want it to stand up. And all it is is a cider. It's not anything, it's just for me to see it with my failing eyesight, right? Just like that. Here's where we'll tie in the dubbing loop. Just like this. One, two, three. Now to control the dubbing loop, there's some dubbing loop tools. Uh, mine's in my little plastic box there, but you can also you know, do this. Put your bodkin in there. 
Ah, nuts. That didn't work, did it? Let me get this correctly for you. I use, uh, let's see. The loop goes in. <laughs> I use this all the time. When it rains, it pours bad. This is good. This is real time stuff. This is. Yeah. This is the reality. The reality yeah. of fly time. <laughs> yeah. Especially size stuff. Like, it's not easy. Jacket catches the. <laughs> After you drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, I had like a big cup right before you guys got here. I was like, oh, game time, Jan. You can do this. <laughs> go, Jan, go. What did I promise to do on this side? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And so that we, concludes the fly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so dubbing loop is uh, come up like this. I'm just going to keep it together, Jan. So like this, one. The thing is flexing like it's crinkling out of style. Two. Some of the some of the hooks are Three. like softer than others. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these dairikis are kind of dairiki. Yeah. yeah, they're they are very they're known for their lack of tempering, as yeah. I would call it. You might have one of those. Right? Yep. They're softer hook, whereas some are stiffer but more brittle. That's um, what that's for. Yeah, huh? and so wait till you see how you do it here. Okay. So this is where this is useful. Okay, so we'll take some of this out and we'll just stuff it in just like this. I love this dubbing idea, that's great. Well, it saves you a lot of money down the line. Yeah. Okay, once that's in, spin it. Okay. If I had anything to say about what I just did, I would say put more of it up toward the, the hook there. You can see I'm gonna get backed up a little bit. But you see how fuzzy that's making it, right? Okay, and then I'll just keep going for a little bit here. Nice and tight. Noise and tight. Everybody drink. Noise and tight. Yeah, I love him. Davy McPhail. Weary. Yeah, that, he's, he's Scottish. He's crazy Scottish. And then I just do this. Right. Get it in there like this. Okay. Like that. Come on. And so I'm kind of finished with that. We're gonna start stroking those fibers back and up, like this. Keep my tension on it. This might be one I just buy. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Come in and tie it off. This isn't my best effort here. I think I know what you did. Yep. There we go, now I got it captured, right? Yep. And then you cut this out of there. Okay. I jammed the eye up a little bit, but everybody does that, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have to put okay. your fingernail across it. There we go. One, two, three, four. And then this will sit on the surface of the water, dust it up. Yeah, look finished. Yeah, you got one. Thanks. Yeah, this is not a beginner's fly cutting class. I was gonna say, <laughs> this size, is not size twenty. I never <laughs> taught anybody <laughs> size <laughs> twenty. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's nice. I mean, like, great. Like, this is yeah. It's 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 a challenge, you know. Yep. Okay. That's, that's, that's nice so now what McPhail does is he flips this over like this, and then is combs this down. So it's all pointed up, okay? 
like this. And you can see how those lo they look like long legs. And it's got the cider. I, I would break some of this off, these little ones. Like that. And let's just see how it stands the test. Are we at the, that one's still floating. Can I look at it? Yep. So, right, get my face well, look close. how buggy the thorax oh, looks. And the cider will keep it floating too. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's great yes. looking fly. Sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> Whew, that one looks hard. Just, yeah, I'll definitely. Well, that's kind oh, of the climax I brought, you know, of the. That's a cool idea. Yeah, the CDC. I like that. that. It's really amazing. And then, like, this is all stuff. Like, for instance, like, we use just use the tips. I'll go home, I'll just, like, snip, 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 and put them in this little little cup there, and I have a little mm -hmm. pile of them. And, mm -hmm. Can I try it? Yeah, go ahead. It's great. Try dubbing. Just then, like d dubbing then, something with it. it. It's fantastic. One of these? Can I grab oh, one? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Please go ahead and try. And then yeah. if you want to use uh, the dubbing uh, tool, it's right here. you just use one or one? I just use two for the cider and... Yeah, it's just like, I'll just chuck a screw Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do <laughs> the same thing sometimes. Sometimes like, uh, I'll be like, I'll be like this, I'll be like... Yeah. <laughs> ah, pull out the old sparkle minnow. Yeah. Yeah, hopper no, seems good. good. Yeah, hopper <laughs> seems good. Put it in there, see how long it lasts. Okay. Just drop her in. Good luck, my friend. Yep. And you can see that thing, that's, that one's sitting a little bit on its side, but the other one... Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. It is. Yeah. Are we supposed to use one Very feather cool. or two feathers? Two. 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 Yeah, you can use two for the cider. Bulk it up, I think. Okay, so. That's the, that's the dubbing tool. When you get to the dubbing tool, I'll come around and I'll help you all out with that. Let's see if you've got one. I don't know. Uh, the other thing you can use is a... Um, is it like this guy? No. Yeah, you can use that. That'll work too. I use a um, paper clip. Yep. Just a little... Yeah, that's a great idea. And, uh, and then... You know what would be great? It's on that bottom of that paper clip is put a split shot on it just to give it a little bit more weight. Oh, Hold it great. down. Yeah. The paper clip idea is fantastic. Give yourself plenty of room at the front of that fly. That's That would be my recommendation. So the cider is like tight in halfway? It, I would put it at the 50% mark pointing back toward the bend of the hook. Right, okay. And you want it standing up a little bit, so you just tie it in regular though, right? It was so old, it was dried out. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I yeah. tried to do a CDC collar on something, I was like, oh, I'm yeah, going to snap. moisten these up a little bit <laughs> before I do anything with them. You know what I do with the quills? Is I could get a, like a pint glass and I just dump, dump the quills them. in there and let them sit so for, for a while. Yeah. yeah. They look so good, though, in an abdomen, a quill. Oh, yeah. I grew up fishing the red quill, uh, you know, Artflix red quill for uh, the... Um, for the Hendrickson, and I just love that fly. All right. Okay. Just to the back, yeah? Yeah, to the back. And then just put two two wraps around it, and then pull it back to the desired length. Okay. Okay. What I do, Jan, is I, I, I go around the... Yes. Like that. Yeah, that's a good more, idea to kind of that, secure it. That, that way you don't have to worry about it. And then, and then I actually sometimes I use this as the spinner thing. Oh, yeah. That so, works, too. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You know what else? I, you know what else? This pattern that that technique is good for is the Dave um, um, Whitlock's uh, red squirrel nymph. How are we doing? Can you can you just trim it off the back, or do you need to, you need to pull it forward if you, you can want trim it shorter? It. I, I pull it forward because I, then I get the tips and yeah, I don't get the stem. Exactly. But you can trim it too. Okay. Okay. This is like there are no rules. Okay. All right. That's the rule, huh? The the really for me it's about function. Yeah. You know and it like. Uh, so if the quills in there, like I have, uh, I've been tying up, I'm going to England to fish for, um, to fish, uh, the famous chalk streams. Mm -hmm. I've been tying flies for that. Nice. You know, my thing. And work, so. when I make the, the CDC Comparadon, mm -hmm. the quills in it, cause the fly, <coughs> those flies are size 10. Is that okay? Well, please go ahead. I don't have one of these tools. I need to buy one. Uh, so when do you go? Uh, the end of May. Nice. Oh, this has been a, a dream trip of mine for over 20 years. And so. Great. Glad you're getting to go. My, it's a bucket trip, right? Bucket list trip. 
I was in Argentina in December. Boy, that was fun. Oh my gosh, that's another one of those. Yeah. I want to go desperately to Absolutely. South America. How was it? Awesome. It was my second time. I loved it. Yeah. Went for two weeks. Yeah, it is. That is a, that is another one. And then the other one I have is um, I, I kind of dream about is to go to the Arctic and fish for Arctic char, <laughs> uh, and then <laughs> Tierra del Fuego to fish for the on the Rio Grande down there. Yeah. Like, to fish for those sea run brown trout. Oh wow. Which I call it the ends of the earth. Yeah. 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 How are we doing, Dave? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Right here, you know, a couple yeah. more to tighten it down. You want to spin, spin, be the spinner that's right here. Okay. So All right, now, now cut these guys. Yep. Get that junk out of there. You don't want to bother you. And then I just I put stuff over the top of it because I know that my dubbing loop is going to go. That's how I'm going to wrap it. It's almost like a trude fly, right? The old trude flies. I love a trude. Me too. Yeah. Dan had a had a little contest here a couple years ago. He had these old, the rude truths. <laughs> you know, like everybody, like whoever brought in the biggest fish on the rude trude would win a would win it. Yeah, uh, but like um, I used to fish the trude coachman all the time. I one I like, and I don't know its name is. It's got like the the trude back end. But then it's kind of leggy, rubber leggy buggy. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's only, you know, like this big. Yeah. But I find in the, in the fire hole on opening day. I love that place. Lots of people are out in the middle fishing. Yeah. I go to the middle, I wade to the middle, but then I fish right on the bank. And yeah. man, I, it gives getting bigger fish. Than, so my yeah. favorite my favorite run there is I, I get over there to the Fairy Falls Trailhead. Yeah. And I fish upstream from there to the Horseshoe Bend. And like the stonefly and PMD hatch in there through the beginning of June, the end of May, is unbelievable. Mm. I don't know about that, yeah, I have here, to I'll say. Show you, let me show you some of the flies. I'm bringing about. a notebook next time. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I love that. I and love that. I love like, We are recording. And, and somehow, <laughs> excellent. Excellent. I love fishing it. I love guiding it. I love everything about the fire hole. Here's here's what the bubble back uh, looks like as a, a PMD. Oh, no. I just broke my... Wow, that's a, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, that must it's a, a lot. It must take a minute, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, it's a unique pattern. That, and you see how spiky that uh, thorax yeah. from that squirrel hair is. Oh, yeah. And then I, I have a package of, uh, because Orvitz kind of skimps on the guard hair, sometimes it just gives you the blue. So I got, I got a package of... Uh, just the guard hairs, I just, I pinch dub it and mix mm. it, pinch mix it. Mm. So it really. This is an awesome fly. Just yeah, here, on. this is, um, this is my fire hole special right there. Oh, yeah. As a, as a dropper <laughs> off a small chubby. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you like a small cool. chubby, like, I mean like a yeah, 14. Because they have these, I don't know what I species they are, but they're still flying about that big. Yeah. Yeah. You got them in front of I do. I, uh, I won't be back in the country until because I'll be in England this year. Well, I just I but just spread it out. I'm always around. I'm always coming in. I'm just putting it in there. The details on how to do it. Yeah. I'll show you where to park. Okay. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Stick it in there, and then you just kind of. Cool. It's my favorite place. To, it's one of my favorite places to fish. Yeah. Is the, yeah. the park now, in general? I could. Right when you got that, don't worry about it if you got all the fibers. Yeah. Do that. Let's see if I got another one in there. They put together. And then just spin whatever spins off. Don't worry about it. Uh, but I also try to try to push it up closer. Closer. Just so we don't get there. You know, you can see how we just adjust it a little bit once we got it, and then spin it really good. You usually, but that fly gray is gray olive. Gray olive red. That those red, you know black. Too, huh? Right, black. I, I thought about putting like a twist of really high quality dubbing, or not dubbing, but a high quality uh, dry fly hackle on it, and I'm not well, the first one, which I believe is still floating. Dry fly. Oh no, it went down to the bottom. Mm. We made it about an hour. Where would you put the dry fly hackle? Oh, you mean like spinning it, tiny, tiny stuff? Yeah. Well, it? one of them went down, but. 
that was the one that was hanging right, but the other one we just tied is still floating. Mm-hmm. Sure is. And look at it from the bottom. Like, because that's how a fish is going to see it. It's so, all legs. Is that about it? That's great. It, right I would make yeah. the cider a little bit smaller, but smaller, just, so, just so you uh, can see it, yeah. Just so you can see yeah, it. That's more dubbing on the front like column. Like now, that'll get it to stand up higher. Now, more dubbing here? Yeah, or more, more, more feathers in the front. CDC. Yep. Uh, the, this, this under, but, in the loop. but I gotta tell you, you, oh, yeah. you put that no, doubt in front of a rising uh, selectively uh -huh. fish, it's gonna come up and yeah. I, I, I gotta believe that. Yeah. Like you said, I, I use a like a paper clip holder for a whiteboard. Yep. And I clip like the small hackle yeah. off and then that will cost Spin that into a loop. And yeah. It's just super leggy. Yeah. 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 This is the first time I've tied some stuff this small. I normally do a lot of streamers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I thought we'd start with midges. Maybe in hindsight we should have started with, but like midges are what what's what they're feeding on now. Yeah. 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 No, this yeah. is good. Okay, Yan, I need some help here. Okay. I'm going to go into it now. Okay, so, okay, so pull off a generous amount of thread off All your right. bobbin. Okay, lay your fingers on it. Yeah. Make a loop. Yeah. Okay, go around it. Go around the hook. One, two. Now Sam does. He goes around the loop this way now. Uh, like over here. Yep. Okay. Exactly right. You're doing go good. Once around the. The the, and then the shank again. Oh, okay, other now way. I'm, going, I'm going the wrong way. Well, that's all right. That's all right. One more like this. Oh, I oh, got you. Figure okay, out now now go over like okay. this. Okay. Now you're locked in. Okay. All right. We got a tool for you. Come in here. Use this one if you want. Yep. You want this one here? Thanks. Okay. Okay. So put this put that there. Okay. Okay. Now here's the the dubbing. And you try to keep this open or yep. closed? You can put your finger in there. Yeah. Okay. Keep it open. There we go. Okay. Good. And then just stuff the, start stuffing this in there. Then all the way up. There you go. That's what we want. Right. That's and then grab some more. Be generous with it. Oh, okay. Um, that's what I didn't do either. It's going to look like my hair. We want, it with, got it cut. we want it to look like it's... <laughs> All spun up. So when you uh, make that dubbing, you just cut off the side of the feather. Yeah. You don't chop it up. Right. Let's go outside. Yeah. So you spread it down the, the this loop a little bit more. Oh, stretch it out. Yeah, stretch it out. Okay. Okay. Now once you stretch it out, good. Now take your finger out and start spinning it. And you'll see it just kind of some of it slipped out the side. Of it. Keep spinning. That's all right. We'll just see how it goes. Well, it's good that Sam's here. He can help out. Yeah. Sam and I guided together a bunch of times. I'm not helping. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine, Sam. <laughs> Sam's got his own special little fly he's shared with me. It's killer. We can we can share that. Okay, is this good here? Yeah, keep keep spinning. Keep, keep spinning. Yep. Keep. How do you know when you're done spinning? Gestalt. <laughs> you just know. <laughs> Good. So like, it depends like, Patty, the answer to that question is like, what are we going to do with it, right? Okay. Okay, good. So that's going to actually spin up, I think, pretty nice. All right. Now, start dubbing it back by the side or back toward the eye. Back by the side. So I need to go on this side of the thread. You know, we can pull the thread off here like this. Oh, that's even better. Yep. And so we'll just... Okay. But, just start uh, giving yourself a nice collar there. And push it up or? Nope, like, just keep okay. going. Yep. You know. The more you can put on there, the better. Here, let's do this. This is what this thing is supposed to be. Like the simplest, right? well, look simplest at that. thing that I Like no, you said, much, the. No, it's not, what do you not call very helpful here. The, <laughs> look there, we there we go. But it's not exactly. Oh, good. Like, uh, what yeah. See how that's uh, really uh, fluffing up nice? Yeah. Now just tie it off when you're ready. Suggest, just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. yeah. You said go big or go home. I say like put as much as you can yeah. on there because that's what that, it's the that surface area that's, that's going to keep it. That looks crazy. Uh, yeah. Okay. So like, back one one turn off. Okay. okay good. And just let's lock it down. 
profile. And okay. Right okay. Color. Come around the back side of that. Right kind of deal. Well, no, you can. I would just do it at the behind the eye. I would stroke it back. Okay. And just lock it all in the place. I need like three more hands, <laughs> and I'd be good to go. You're good. This is, this is good. You're doing great. Fly. I don't even know where the eye is at this point. There it is. There it yep, is. You got, got it. it. Yeah. Got it. You're mine. No, no. I have a little one just like this. Okay, I can cut this guy off. Yep. Okay, now stroke all those fibers backwards. That's another thing McPhail does really well as he manages his, yeah. his materials by like physically like, manipulating no, them like this. Nice. Yeah, I've looked at them, but I haven't. Without the $200 and $300. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just okay. tie it down. Yep. Screw it on there for yeah. Amazon. It spins. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. One of my loops got. That's all right. Just pull, pop it right on out of there. Oh. oh. There you We're go. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Houston? <laughs> we have an issue. <laughs> so there's a bunch of stuff out there. One of the coolest books I've gotten recently on midges is this one here called Modern Midgens by this guy named Tack. He's pretty famous in the publishing industry, but it, one of the great things is it comes with a spiral binder, mm -hmm. right? So that kind of stuff. But um, Rick Takahashi, he's written a series of books on modern midges, modern terrestrials, modern dries, modern whatever. Some of the older ones are like Ed Koch and, and Holbrook wrote Midge Magic. This one right here by Pat Dorsey on tailwater flies has some great midge patterns in it. And then um, this guy is remarkable. Uh, so he, he, his shop is right across from Rene Harrop's, was down in Last Chance, Idaho. This is Mike Lawson's book on Spring Creeks. Great book. I like the technical things. If you can find one of those, it, it gives you great line drawings. Of, this is a good one. Oh, yeah. Charlie Craven. Yep. Mm. And you're welcome to check it out. We've got some few awesome. other. Awesome. And so uh, I got that when I was at the University of Wisconsin uh, working in the College of Natural Resources. They had an uh, they had aquatic uh, entomology uh, department there where wow. yeah, there was a guy there. His name was Jeff Demick. And Jeff had, had named three stonefly species in wow. central Wisconsin. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. cool. Yeah. That's really so, are you a biology a major? Yes. Bugs, yeah. <laughs> Geology. Nice. You can Theologies. That's right. You can name yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, I mean, like, I've done all kinds of work in my life from risk manager to whatever, but, like, I still consider myself a naturalist and a biologist, and mm. I love these stuff like that because they give you, like, scientific line drawings of what mm. they look like. Again, we don't have to make it exactly, but we can approximate those things, like the little caudal tail. Gives it a fly just a little bit more movement. Mm -hmm. Not crazy big, but a little bit more. So, that's what I had for you guys today. Excellent, this Thank was you. so Thank good. Thank you so much. I'm happy yeah. to do it. I love I love uh, fly tying, I love fly fishing, and so I'm, I'm happy to do it. Dan and I would like to do one once a week, oh, uh, awesome. going in through yeah, so Rizzo, runoff. Originally, we were going to do this Wednesday nights, but this Wednesday night was such nasty weather. Yeah. yeah. It, is, is this a better time, or would uh, Wednesday evening? Or it's up to you guys. It really, it's hard. up to. Uh, uh, what, I want to give people what they want. Yeah, if there's something you want to tie, it's convenient. And, yeah. and uh, I would love to do Wednesdays because it's working. Yeah. And, yeah. And it doesn't. You know, if it's nice weather, I. It doesn't nuke all, your weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here, take some of this back with you and make it into dubbing. Thank you. Cool. The stuff you got, take it, just like, I mean, like, I just keep it in this little container and it, and so. Let's see, Who, who's yeah, was this? this? Yeah. So, That's his, yeah. Are you, are you going to be ready for this Wednesday? Or you I can do it this Wednesday, yeah, I can figure it all out. I'll be gone this Wednesday, but I'll be back the next one. All right. And so we'll we'll just do things if you have things that you want to tie and I have patterns for it. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to to uh, take it. Like, Dan and I talked about doing betas. Yeah. And that that Cheeseman emerger is like a bunch of betas patterns, but I also tie pretty formal beta snip and I tie uh, comparadon and stuff like that. That sounds yeah. great. And Super if you want, and like I like the I think the best betas hatches around are on the spring creeks. And I love those spring. So I fish like that big run a lot, and then I'll fish the slow water. Let's see. Do you have a plan on next Wednesday, like six o'clock and six eight? Keep things on the on the Facebook page and all as well. Yeah. Okay. And invite 
other folks, the more the yeah. merrier. And yeah. sure, we have extra vices, and we we'll vices be a little bit. We got a supply. Kind of our first one on, so we'll, we'll have like a little bit more smoothed out. You know, these are some like you gave us some awesome patterns. Super awesome. Awesome. By nice next week, try. we should be able to project on there. So that so the the yeah, the, that'd be really handy. The one Just that I passed the, around is the. For that, so. mm -hmm. The one I passed around mm -hmm. with the red wire is yeah. a pretty tried and true nymph for me, uh, especially on the spring creeks. It's done well on the the uh, mm. the um the bighorn and the Missouri, and it's um. But it's, it's exactly what we That's were doing fun. today. We built a thread abdomen. We ribbed it. In this case, I rib it with um, the red wire. I put two beads on, one opalescent, mm. which kind of looks like the air that's escaping the thorax of the, um, the body. And then I call it the blood blister mitch because I put a blood red one on <coughs> behind it as if something has gone horribly wrong. And... Um, <laughs> And so we call it the Blood Blister Midge. We kind of made it up at the pews and have been selling it here and uh, testing it through the shop here. Yeah. It's been a good fly for a lot of people in the, who uh, go down to the creeks and uh, into the tailwaters. So it's awesome. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, we'll answer them. Yeah, if you guys want some of this material, please, if you don't have it, take some with you. Don't you? Some CDC fibers or whatever. So I put one more piece of material on the fly. My wife's gonna kill me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> I've been there. There's a there's a there's a there's a, a hen pheasant wrapped in a garbage bag, <laughs> like I'm some sort of serial killer in the oh bottom of our God. freezer because my wife is like, I'm done with this. Oh, that would gross me out. Yeah. <laughs> It's just haven't had a time to take the the skin off. Oh, the, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> no, this is great. Thanks for your tungsten beads. Yep. Who are you, who's your supplier? Because you say you're buying them by the thousands. Like yeah. Okay. Like Fifty of them. So I I uh, typically order um, I order my tungsten beads. I, I that bothers me about the industry that they give them to you like ten in a little bag. Yeah. I mean, I'm like I want more. Too, right. Yeah. So there are a number of outlets, like I will order, uh, the Nelsons will put a special order in for me, and that's when I kind of order weight, for lack of a better term. Okay. Um, we don't have an account I'm aware of here yet. We do. We do. Dan, Dan would do we could probably order stuff through here. Um, we got a hairline account, okay, so. Uh, but, um, you know, the guy at Dan Bailey's is very helpful. We can put in a private an order here. I ordered from Orvis. I'm on their pro. I'm on their pro plan or whatever. And so, but uh, because I kamikaze, kamikaze. So we, I grind a lot of these flies out for here myself, my other other people. I, I at this point I'm preferring to see if I can get a deal on a thousand as opposed to right. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I'm, I'm doing now. I think I think in my mind I have this idea that there's a there's an opportunity for like a Livingston Fly Tires Guild where we where like like-minded individuals come together. We uh, pay a thirty dollar yearly fee and we get an I E I N and go and say we want to buy five thousand hooks. Yeah, and then there's that would be awesome. ten people who sit around a table and partition out. Yeah, yeah. that would be yeah. something like that. Yeah, so Dan's telling us we can we can do stuff like that if you want to like if yeah. we if as a group we want to do that I'm happy to coordinate and coordinate that and, and uh, make it happen for that'd be fun. I would yeah. sign up for that. I'd sign yeah. up for that. Yeah, I just think it's I think it's also a great way to meet other people in the community and learn new things. Like I learned uh, there's a young man in the valley here named Zach Petrich. He's a born and raised in the valley. He's a guide. He, the kid's got Yellowstone water running through his veins. He's <laughs> He catches fish like there's no business mm -hmm. to him. And Zach has got some unique things that he does to his flies. Mm -hmm. like he and I trade ideas, and I think it's a great idea to trade ideas. Like, I didn't, I didn't make any of this stuff up. I either stole it from somebody, or we shared it, or whatever, right? Yeah. I mean, and I think there's opportunity, especially in these kind of like round table situations, for people to meet each other and and do cool things with flies. And I and I and I think in a in a crazy world of bad news all the time. Sitting around time with flying with some people is pretty awesome.
So totally sharing agree. ideas. That's how that's how like innovation happens too. That's like we're like aha, and all of a sudden you got the you know the Sam Specter, yeah. you know, or whatever. I mean yeah. that's how it happens. It's not like you don't live in a, we don't live in bubbles. We no. yeah. you got a and sharing you know, is actually is good. It's helpful. You know? Yeah. Right. It's a good for the soul as well. Yeah. And so I I. I, I love doing this stuff. I, I could do it all day long. I mean, my ultimate goal in life is to do it all day long. <laughs> you, well, you did an awesome job today. Well, thank, thank, you. thank you. I appreciate yeah, you really coming appreciate out. And I come by the shop. I'm, I'm right now. I'm here five days a week. Come the guiding season will be a little less, but okay. uh, um, but Dan and I are here to kind of push all this stuff forward. Excellent. I love flies. I love fly fishing. I love talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I don't. I'm not like one of those people no, who are like, I'm not going to tell you this, this secret spot. I'm like, you should go here. This place is awesome. But I'm going to come talk to you. But like, we live in a very, very, very unique place in the world for fishing, and we should we should celebrate that. Like, I I think like every kid to get their diploma should know how to at least tie a hair's ear and damn a peasant tail and add them <laughs> an elk hair cat that's in a streamer. That should be at like at least in Livingston, right? At least yeah. in Livingston, right? A chubby, yeah, right. a chubby too, yeah. right? You know, I was thinking the other day, like, um, it's like uh, how like my daughter plays basketball, right? And so like, what's interesting about basketball isn't necessarily somebody running up and, but like the rules of the game of basketball kind of like make you be creative within the bounds of those rules. Mm -hmm. And I thought like, gosh, I, I had the idea. I was actually counting flies the other day. I was like. If I could only fish for twelve with twelve flies <laughs> for a season, what would they be? What would be my my twelve? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'd be like, and two of them were midges. Yeah. <laughs> I've done previous employees exactly that. Yeah, just say like uh well one dirty dozen. Right. Well like the um the one I read it was that uh the guy who owns Patagonia, Yvonne Chenard, mm -hmm. spent an entire season fishing a soft tackle pheasant tail. Not just as many fish. Yeah, and he—that's that was the only fly he used, the only pattern he used. And I thought, what a kind of a cool exercise would be to limit yourself from. And trust me, when you come to my office, there are boxes and boxes yeah. and boxes of <laughs> flies stacked on top of each other on plates because they're out of the rotation, whatever. But uh, but like, think, I, so I what I did was I sat down and I tied um, uh, soft tackle. Pheasant tail soft tackle from size 20 all the way up onto uh, spay fly. Mm. I ended up giving it away as a present for Christmas to somebody. But I was like, how cool is that to limit yourself to that? And like, mm. how would I adapt that fly, right, to a midge hatch? How would I adapt a mm. pheasant tail to a midge hatch? Or a beta hatch? Or the green drake? Or, and if it's, Simplicity, you know, like I think about Frank Sawyer all the time, you know, 75 years ago He came up with the pheasant tail nymph to this day. We're still fishing the pheasant tail mm -hmm. nymph still fishing. His version on the spring creeks. His version on the spring creeks is all, pr all produces the Altoff one with the <coughs> It's uh, not uh, the peacock in the, in the thorax So I mean that's like if you notice like today our bodies were all built the same way, mm -hmm. right? We just we're just adding different, different yeah. mm. aftermarket parts to it, right? Mm -hmm. Little flash, checking no it flash. out. Little flash, yeah. no flash. Right. Uh, little yep. tie it so that it floats. Tie it so it sinks. Yeah, that's kind of more. I think it's those little things. They flash of color, a little bit of color, a little bit of flash. Little and movement, and little, little, little movement, movement. Like you said, yep. And and that, those are the things that are kind of trigger points that others you know, talked about. And then drifting them, it right? Than a stick. I mean. Fish eat a lot of sticks. I mean, like, you know, look at the Moorish hopper, and I'm like, that looks an awful lot like a cigarette butt that's been trimmed on. <laughs> you know, with rubber legs. It really looks like a cigarette butt to me. <laughs> not that smart. Right? I know. You so get, get that instinct. <laughs> and I love, I, I love going down the rabbit hole on, like, why does this animal with a brain the size of a pea outsmart me on a pretty regular basis? <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for coming Thank on, you. you guys. We really appreciate it. I had a fun time. Yeah. We plan on Wednesday night. On 6 o'clock Wednesday, if that works for folks. And tell everybody you know.
We'd love to have people like, come. Love to have her. The more people we can get involved, the better. Yeah. Like Jan said, the more people, the more ideas that around. Yeah. Yeah. So is this piece of